You hot, Tina? Mm -hmm. All right. Usually get stuffy in here. I'm just gonna turn the air down. I know Mike Phillips real well. Does he work here? Mike Phillips. Or is he not sure? I always get like, confused. Uh, this is a Ted Phillips. Yeah. All, right. All right. What's your name? Denise. Winchester. What's your birthday? 3770. And what's your address? 5017 Centennial Oak Circle. Awesome. 08. What's a good phone number for you? 850-509-5545. Um, all right, and who, who, what's your husband's name? Brian, B-R-I-A-N, mm -hmm. Winchester. What's his birthday? 10-27-70. And where is he living now? He lives on Miller Landing Road, but I don't remember the number. Do you know his cell phone number? Mm-hmm. Um, 850-509-0040. Do you know what company that is, the cell phone provider? That's yes, right. All right. I know you talked a little bit to uh, Deputy Haber. Just give me a rundown on what happened today. We're almost in the fourth year of our separation and divorce. Um, another divorce date is looming Wednesday. Um, he, I'll just tell you about what happened today. Okay. Um, so I go out to my car to go to work. I work at FSU. Um, I've turned out on the Kosuke Road. And this, From Centennial Road? Yeah. What kind of car do you have? It's a Suburban. Um, what color? Gold. Like an old, it's like 2002. So I turned, I, I walked out of my house about 9-10. So then I pulled out on the Kosuke Road. I was calling my sister and this person starts climbing out of the very back. And I couldn't tell at first who it was, um, but then immediately I knew who it was, but I was screaming and the phone helped me. I didn't know if she had picked up yet or not. Mm -hmm. So I was screaming, help me, and then he grabbed the phone. So I don't know if he turned it off. I don't know how, I never saw the phone again. But he, um, he, you know, was up and grabbing me and um, he pulled my face pretty hard. And he goes, you know, he's cussing, you know, you, you will turn here, you will turn here, blah, blah, blah. And I kept going straight down because looking, I didn't do what he told me to do. So then he goes, I'm going to effing hurt you if you don't, you turn here. And I kept going straight again. And then, and I turned around and I go, what do you mean hurt me? And he pulled out a gun, like a gun, not a hunting gun, but like a gun he would kill someone with. And he put it right here in my ribs. He put it right here. And he goes with this and he pressed it in there. You will turn. Well, I kept, in my head, I was like, I'm making it to CVS because that's our CVS. And I was just like, I'm making it to CVS. So he put it right there. Um, I, he was screaming, and so I um, didn't know if I should go in the ditch. Like, well, I didn't know what to do, and um, but I kept driving. So anyway, where was he when this happened? Where was he? Did he like? Did he climb? Yeah, he was over. Yeah, he had, he climbed out from the back. It's two, two, and then a back, and then the seat, and then a back. So he was in the back, I guess, hiding. And then when he came out, he came up to right behind me. So like, I'm driving, and he's right, he's right here, and and then the gun's right here. So he's right here. Did you see what the gun looked like? Like what color it was? Or I mean, it was dark. Um, but it was, a, it was like a handgun, I guess, um, okay. but it would, I mean, it was, it was dark. So dark color? Yeah. Um, but he, um, but anyway, so, so then I pulled into CVS and he was like, turn here, turn here, because CVS has like back parking and he took the wheel and was trying to force it to turn. And I don't know how, but I just like took the wheel back. I mean, I t and for us, the fact that we didn't wreck was unbelievable. And I took it back and I parked right at the front door in the in the spot that was right against the grass. So like the camera's right there. Like I knew, because I go there all the time, that there are cameras there. So I parked right there at the front. And this is the one on Capitol Circle and mm -hmm. Mikasuki? Right, so we were probably there at like 9.17 or so, I would, you know, because probably. And so we pulled in, and he said, and he, he kept saying, I just want to talk to you, I just want to talk to you, because he's been emailing me, you know, texting me, I blocked him off everything, trying to get me to stop the divorce. Mm -hmm. I just want to talk to you, I just want to talk to you. And, um, and I turned around and I go, I will talk to you from right here, because he, he was trying to get me to move the car. I will talk to you from right here, and that's it. So you wanted you to get um, in the back with him? Yeah, so then he wanted me to get in the back, and I said, no, I'll sit in this seat, and I was in the driver's seat the whole time. 
and, and so he was mad, but he held on to the seatbelt because I was I had already buckled myself in from the beginning, and so he held on to the red buckle right here. So he's like in this seat, but he's leaned forward holding the seatbelt together so I can't get out because I pictured that I was going to just get out and go running, screaming into CVS. That's what I thought in my head. But he held me and I couldn't. Um, I'm not sure where the gun was at that point, but he was he was holding it tight, and so and then he locked the doors. Um, and then he locked the doors, and then um, I said, I'll talk to you from right here. Well, he held the seatbelt for quite a, quite a while as he's screaming, and I'm just like shaking, and he's telling me to stop crying that people are going to notice because people were coming in and out the whole time. Uh-huh. And uh, one lady, I, she looked at me, and I thought, I was just like, I was going to say help, but then I was too scared. So he, so he kept hold, holding it. Well, finally, he just kept saying, I just want to talk to you. Talk to me. I just want to talk to you. So then I was just like, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to, I want to talk about the divorce, blah, blah. And so as he started talking and asking me to call the divorce off, he would ease, he eased back and he ended up sitting in that seat, you know, the one like right here. The one next and he seat. let go. No, he stayed in the seat behind. So okay. like, yeah, he was in this seat and I was right here. So I could turn and see him. And he held the gun the whole time. So he was on the passenger side? Okay. The back passenger. And he held the gun between, it was between his legs the whole time. So that's why I didn't want to yell to the lady or anything because it was, because it was right there. So the gun stayed there the whole time. He finally had let go of the seat. So I was still buckled in, but I was turning, and I was like, what do you want to talk about? So then he was like, you won't answer my text. You won't answer. I had to do this because you won't answer my text or my calls. Um, please just call the divorce off. I've lost everything, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I ended up, we were probably there, I mean, for like, it felt, you know, maybe 45 minutes to an hour or so. If their cameras do work, I mean, they'll see the, they'll see the whole thing. I would cry some and cry not. It was raining and people would come and go. But I ended up, um, he, I mean, of course, at the beginning, especially, he was, he was crazed. And then as we were talking, I was just kind of agreeing with whatever he was saying. And I was like, I know that you love me. And I, he's recently lost his son. Um, his son has decided to move in with Anyway, he, he had joint custody and now he doesn't. And so he said, I've lost my son, I've lost you, I have nothing to live for. And I was like, well, Brian, you're the only one who can change. He, This is a side note, but his son left him because he, the son is 17 now, went through his phone, Brian's phone, and found out that he's been seeing prostitutes. They found the website, they know the girls have been in the house, with where, where, where my stepson was living. And that they've been doing drugs because there's a text about drugs back and forth. And Stafford, my stepson, took pictures of all the texts from Brian's phone. He took pictures of everything he found in the house. So that's all we have proof of all that. And so I just kept saying, you, you've got to stop living that way. You got, you know, you could get us all back if you'll just turn your life around. Because he was a Christian at one point. And I was like, if you'll just turn back to the Lord. So the whole time I'm turned this way. I'm buckled in, but he's he's calm. He's calming down. And so but the gun's still right there. And I'm just like, what what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And he's like, what am I doing? I could tell he was. You know, and I was like, I don't know. I know you want to talk to me, and and I'll, this is not the way to do it. I know. What have I done? And it's like he kind of woke up. Like, what have I done? What have I done? And I was like, listen, let me take you. Let's go to your dad's office. The dad owns the business. I said, let's go to your dad's office and talk to him. I said, I don't want you arrested. I don't. I just want to get past this. This can be your rock bottom. Do you think this is your rock bottom? What do you think? You know. So I mean, I I could tell. So he was, but then. But it was the guy was start there, and so so I ended up convincing him, we're gonna we're gonna talk to your dad. We're gonna get through this. We're, you know, we and I kept saying we, and so um, so then he called his dad on from his cell phone. Oh, oh, by the way, the whole time he kept going through my phone because he had it, trying to see if I had a boyfriend, right? Which I mean, a don't. He was going through my phone the whole time. But anyway, he, he called his dad, put his dad on speaker, uh, and 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 I didn't yell out because the gun was right there. But he he said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm going to a meeting at 11. And Brian said, well, call me when you get out. I need to talk to you. And he said, OK. So I didn't yell out. I didn't say anything. And he hung up. And I said, Brian, let me go to work. Let, let me go to work. Show my face. People are going to wonder where I'm at. You call me at work. And then I'll come out and meet with you and your dad. I will not call the police. I promise. I promised a million times that I wouldn't call the police. And I said, and I'll meet you out there, and we'll talk about this. This can be, I didn't say a new beginning, but I said, like, you know, this can be the end of all this, you know, blah, blah. So, but I did, but he told me his truck was parked at that park. And I didn't want to go there because I knew nobody would be there this early, you know. And so, the mm, and so I said, your truck is there? And he said, yes. And I said, well, um, let me just take you to your office. I'll just drop you off at your office. Well, no, I have to have a truck, blah, blah, blah. And it, was, it was just getting ridiculous to find out. It was like, I'll drive you to your truck. 
you will get out. And then, but, and, but then I said, but it's up to you. I just kept saying, like, you're in charge. It's up to you. But if you will get out and let me go to work, then call me at work. You can, my work phone is the only phone I have a blocked one. I said, you can call me at work. You can confirm I'm there. And I will, I will meet you and your dad later this afternoon. Okay. Okay. And then, then I was like, Brian, I've got to go. So then he went from the seat to the back row and put his knees there and started pulling stuff out of the back and shoving it into a backpack. And I saw sheets, I want to say plastic, it maybe was plastic, I don't know, but it was maybe a sheet and a plastic something, I don't know, but it was fabric looking. And he shoved all that in the, um, in the backpack. Then he had a bottle, which it was like, you know, those old timey bleach bottles that are like white you know, with the sprayer thing, a huge one. It was like a spray thing? Yeah. Um, he had that, put that in the backpack, and then something else. And I don't, I, I, when I saw the bleach, I was like, oh my God, like I just kind of lost, like I, in my head, I kind of lost it. And so it was something else, like a tool or something, not a hammer, but something like that. I, I don't know. And then he shoved that in the backpack, and then I said, Brian, where's the gun? I don't want the gun anywhere near me. Where's the gun? It's right here. He, it, he had, it was on the floor at that point, I guess because he knocked it or something. I don't know. But he picked it up, and he put it in the backpack, and he zipped the backpack up. And then he opened up a little zipper of the front backpack, took his keys out, and then he starts crying. What have I done? What have I done? It's too late for us. And I know it's not like, I'll, I'll just let me go to work and I'll call, meet you later. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know. I know. And then he opened the door himself. And I never turned the car off or anything when we read that part. And he got out and he shut the door. And then I drove off. I went down Nikosuke just like I would go to work. He pulled up next to me at the light at Capitol Circle, rolled his window down, and he said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, and was crying. And I said, I know, and he turned right to head north, and then I, had, I went on. So, and supposedly he was going to his office. Where's his office at? Cary Forest Parkway. You know the address? Or what the business name is? Yeah, yeah, it's his dad. It's Winchester Financial Group. And the whole time I was just praying. But all he wanted was to talk to me, for me to call the divorce off. Oh, oh. And in, intermittently he would say he was going to kill himself. A lot he said that. Because I was like, are you planning on ending both of our lives? Like as he got calmer at CBS, I said, are you planning on you know, ending both of our lives today? Well, mine. I'm planning on mine. And then he would say, I want to kill myself. He must have said a million times, I want to kill myself. I've lost everything. Um, I reached back a couple of times at CBS and would like touch his knee. Like when I could tell that he was getting calmer, I was like, I know, I know. Like, so the video will probably show that. I mean, if, you, if there is one. Um, he was going to kill himself. I didn't know if I should, I didn't plan on coming here because I wanted to follow through with what I said. I wanted to talk with Marcus. Brian also promised he would tell his dad everything and he would go away to rehab. He's mm -hmm. supposedly being treated for sex addiction. So he said he would go away to rehab. Um, I was going to follow through with that because this is going to make him really mad. And so I called Deborah, my sister made me call her husband, who's a policeman. And he said, you have, you have to, you have to turn him in. But I still, I mean, I've already told you everything, but I still don't know if it's the right thing to do because it's going to make him so mad. And then you guys, we, we can't, can I can't have a 24-hour policeman with me. And he's going to, wherever, if he gets arrested, if he doesn't, he's going to be free at some point. I have a daughter. I mean, I just, it's not his daughter, but I just, I don't know. We, we can try and get him some help. But that's um, the honest, that's exactly what happened. Okay. Um, what kind of truck does he drive? My daughter actually had the exact whatever and gave it to the man downstairs. It's a GMC Sierra. It's a 2015. It's huge. It's extended cab. I mean, it's a huge truck. And it's it's like a dark gray, brown color. It's a weird color. Almost like, almost like your shirt. Yeah. Um, and that backpack is in his truck, I know, because I, he threw it in when he got in. What did the backpack look like? It was black. Um, Any other colors on it? It had some white, maybe like a whatever the emblem was or the name brand might have been in white, but that's and it had an out zipper because that's where he got his keys. Um, what was he wearing? He, okay, he he was wearing shorts and a shirt, a collared shirt, um, and both 
the shorts um, were navy blue, Bermuda, like, you know, longer shorts. Mm -hmm. I want to say oh, the shirt was maybe a burgundy. I think it, I think it was, it was darker color too, maybe like a burgundy. I didn't even think about that when I was in there. Um, no hat, he didn't have a hat on, he didn't have sunglasses, he had tennis shoes on. Does he have facial hair? No. Do you think he went back to his office? Supposedly. And okay. then, he, then he was going to call me to set up this meeting, and I'm not there, and that's going to make him mad, so that's going to send him to FSU looking for me. Um, because the last time we had a court date, which was a, about three weeks ago, he showed up. I what do you work at FSU? At FSU in the stadium. And I pulled up to my normal spot. And well, um, what do you do? Like what? A CPA, controller's office. Is it just one office? Um, no, no, it's a, it's a fifth floor of the of building A in the stadium. And he knows, he knows where I work. He's my mom. Um, but last time there was a court date, he showed up in the parking lot and I wouldn't, he wanted to talk to me and I wouldn't, so I just kept driving around. He kept following me. My boss ended up coming out, so he left. Or I called my boss and so he left. Um, that was the only time he showed up at work unannounced. Okay. Um, Alright, um, give me one second, I'll step out and just see if I need anything else. Do you need anything right now? Or? No, I'm okay. thinking no, there's anything else. He was very, very suicidal, but towards the end, I mean, he was calm. Okay. Calmer. Alright, well, give me just one minute, I'll be right back.
identifying um, your workplace of the situation. So I don't know if they're aware of anything that's been going on. My boss is. Okay. Um, it's always good when you have a, someone in the workplace that you can trust and that you're comfortable letting know when there's things like this going on. But just because of the nature of everything that's happened, they are going to just make a phone call over there to kind of be on alert. And put Can I give them my boss's name? Do they need that? Or Would you like me to call Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, it's Carla Daniels. Carla Daniels. Yeah. I'll let him know real quick. I think he's on the phone right now. I'm very worried because I promised him I got out of it because I mm -hmm. promised him that I would not come to the police and I promised him that I would go straight to work and I blocked him from all my other stuff but he can still call my work friends so mm -hmm. he was going to call me to make sure I was there. Mm -hmm. So obviously I'm not there which means if he called me and I wasn't there then he's going to start looking he's looking for me right now. I know okay. it. Okay. And which means he's going to FSU he's going to look through the parking lot for mm -hmm. my car because he knows where, and he's going to see that I'm not there mm -hmm. and so he's going to start to get really mad again. When I left him mm -hmm. he wasn't Okay. crazy and mad. He was weeping and apologizing. Sure. But this is going to set him off again. That's why I didn't even know if coming here was the right... I still don't know if coming here was the right thing to do. It's the right thing, Denise. You've done the right thing. There's nothing easy about this, but you've done the right thing. But y'all can't Detective live with Salvo those. On, he's on the phone with FSU right now, letting them know and making them aware, okay, and giving them a heads up. So we're going to take care of that and make sure that they stay as safe as they can and let them know what's going on. And you said that Carla already knows yeah. about the history and everything. Yeah. So he's on the phone with them right okay. now. He's on the phone with them telling them, giving a description, everything like that. So um, focus, I'm going to focus on you. And you said you have a daughter. How old is she? 17. 17? Okay. Is it just you and your daughter? Okay. Well, let's focus on you and your daughter right now. What's her name? Ansley. Ansley has a wonderful name. Like that. Um, but I don't know how we're going to be safe. Well, I'm gonna, that's why I'm here. I'm going to help you with that. Okay. Um, my first suggestion, one of the things that comes to mind right now is when we finish here, there's still some things that have to be done, um, file for an injunction. I'll accompany you, we'll go to the courthouse and you can file for an uh, injunction, okay? I'm just going to make notes in my bag. Absolutely. Here, I feel like uh, I can, whichever you prefer, so most people use their phones nowadays, but sometimes it's helpful to write it down and you want a piece of paper. Um, what does that mean, file an injunction? An injunction is an order of protection. Mm -hmm. It's like a restraining order, and it's going to prohibit him from having any contact with you, and you can include your daughter okay. in that, okay? okay. Um, I'll go down there with you. Okay. Um, there is a Refuge House Injunction wow. Assistance Office. Have you ever heard of the Refuge House? No. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. We'll take it one step at a time. Um, the Injunction Assistance Office is there. They're staffed with advocates, just like me, who can help you, and we can go there together and get this filed, okay? okay. Um, what's going to happen is it's free, there's no fee or anything. Um, you fill out the paperwork, you'll put down your information, your daughter's information, okay. um, places that he's going to be prohibited from, you know, locations or workplace. Okay. Um, if she's in school, we yeah. put that on there, things like okay. that, so we can talk about okay. it when we get there. Um, and then a judge will review it. Okay. And at 4 o'clock today, you'll know whether the injunction, bill, the judge will grant either a temporary injunction or dismiss it. Okay. Um, it would be pretty wild. I can't guarantee anything, but it would be pretty wild for it to be dismissed given the circumstances okay. of you describing them. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say let's file for the injunction. So once that happens, we can, it'll all happen today. We'll okay. find out but before okay. 5 o'clock today. You okay. can go and pick up a copy of your temporary injunction if okay. it's granted okay. and keep that with you. And then we're also going to make copies and give it to whoever we need to at FSU, okay. at your daughter's, okay. wherever she frequents, okay. whatever we need, okay? okay? And so once that temporary injunction is, place, is in place, our deputies are going to work on getting him served. Okay. And now they have to be able to locate him in order to do that, but we're looking for him. Okay. Um, so... 
will get him served. Serve him with that restraining order. Yes, yes. Okay. he will get served. Okay. Once it's in place, if it's granted, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it'll go into place, get him served, and become active. If it did get, uh, if it, if it did get approved today, mm -hmm. would he be served today? As, if they can locate him, okay. absolutely. Okay. It would be a priority, okay. yes, to as soon as possible. Okay. That's the goal there. Because okay. um, it'll go into effect immediately once he's served with those papers. Um, any contact from there is going to be a violation of that injunction that you can report and he can be charged with, depending on, you know, of course, the okay. follow up there. Um, but that injunction is going to work to protect you. It's going to, no contact by phone, email, certainly not in person, no third party contact, okay. nothing of that. And then, again, the locations that are listed within, okay. he's not going to be allowed to go to FSU, to your okay. workplace, you know, things like that. And we'll sit down and go over okay. it all together while we're there. But, um, We'll do the injunction. That's the first step, I think. It's it's a restraining order. Okay. It's going to keep him from, if he calls you once he serves with that paperwork, that's a violation. Okay. And we're going to follow up on that, okay? okay. Um, so we'll do what we can. It's, you know, a lot of times people think that, you know, it's just a piece of paper. Is it really going to protect me? But it, it really can work to protect you. And I, I suggest that okay. I think we should go there. Okay. Like I said, we'll, I can't we'll have to do certain things here. Yeah. It, it does. It really yeah. will work to protect you. Um, so we'll file for the injunction. Okay, um, so that's going to cease all contact from him. Okay. Um, after that, we'll have to think about a safe place for you to stay. Well, I think my sister's husband's a policeman at TPD, so okay. she said I could stay with him. Okay. Do you think his, does he know that he location? He doesn't know, I don't think so, because okay. it's in one of the I don't think he even knows where they live. Okay, so he wouldn't even know no, where so. to find you or anything? I okay. can't imagine. Because I don't even think his address is published. I don't think they don't yeah. publish GPD office. So I don't think he would know. Okay. Okay. Well, that's He's never great. been there. Okay. Um, All right. And that's fine. And that, I think that's a good option, especially since he's law enforcement. And you said yeah. your sister's and her. It's, it's my sister's husband. Sister's he's husband. a TPD. Okay. Well, that's And he has a car, his car parked out. You know, it's okay. that TPD car. Absolutely. Right. And I don't know if there's any way, just, I mean, any little thing we can do. It sounds like he obviously knows what vehicle you drive. When you're there, if you can maybe put your car in the garage yeah. okay. and hide it, okay. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, just all these little things that we can do, to whatever we can to protect you so that he wouldn't even, even if he did for some reason know this address, right. which we don't My think he does, yeah. he won't even see your car, because that can be an identifier. So okay. let's park that okay. in a garage or something like that somewhere, and we're going to stay there tonight, okay? Yeah. And, or at least for tonight, yeah. we'll say that. Yeah. Um, I brought up the refuge house earlier, and they're the injunction assistance office mm -hmm. that we're going to use. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to providing injunction assistance, they're a safe shelter. Um, you have somewhere to go, but I want you to be mm -hmm. aware. Okay that in the event of an emergency, okay. there is a shelter here by okay. the name of Refuge House, okay? okay. Um, and if it came down to it, you can have it. It's strictly confidential. Okay. Um, it's it's a safe place for you to go. It's a 24-7 operation, okay? okay. okay. Um, and so I can give you some information for them and contact if you wanted to, okay. um, because they also do, down the line, they have counseling and okay. support groups and things like that. Okay. So it's a wide variety of services, but right now I'm thinking emergency yeah. shelter, yeah. if ever needed. Yeah. Okay. But I'm glad that you have a safe place to go, especially with TPD yeah. officer. Um, if you felt the need, we could arrange for extra patrol at his residence, even. Um, and that would, I mean, he's got the cruiser parked yeah. in his driveway, but they could still keep an eye out. And I think that that would be, considering cool. we're, you know, local agencies that work together here, we can, he'll, um... Well, once my husband no, finds out, once he gets served, that's when, that's, I mean, right now he's probably okay just looking for me, but when he yeah. finds out that I did come, that's when it's going to be. I mean, that's what he's going to be really mad. Well, and that's when we're going to take steps to make sure that you're safe okay. and that you're protected from him because he's got all these emotions that he's trying to deal with and that he needs to work out, and he's got to make that decision to help himself and get this help yeah. that he's needing um, before he can really start to make any progress. And you got to worry about yourself and your daughter right now. I know, but I mean, yourselves. I can't live with him forever. I mean, I just... Yeah. Well, we'll get through this. Okay. Yes, that's why I'm here. I'm here. This doesn't end today. I'm, yeah. I'm going to give you my number, and we'll be in touch, okay? And I'll be by your side every step of the way through this, okay? okay. Um, so we'll take it step by step so it's not overwhelming. And, and I should probably call my divorce attorney and tell her she's going to be surprised. Yeah. I was going to ask about that, because when we go to, um, to file for the injunction, we could refer you for legal services, but if you have no. an attorney, yeah. okay. Well, then, yeah, yeah, I would definitely consult with, okay. with her, he said, with her. Definitely, it's always good to make sure that she's in the loop and aware of anything, certainly with given the circumstances. So give her a call. Okay. And let her know what's going on, okay? Uh -huh. So um, so we'll just 
we'll leave that there for now because okay. we'll go do the injunction. I don't want to, okay. you know, too much at one time, but we'll do the injunction. Um, refuge house is available if you need it, but you've got a safe place to go. So. And I also want to tell all my neighbors too because they know um, they know that we're going through this long divorce mm -hmm. and um, they they need to know what happened this morning. That's very that's okay. wise of you. Um, and you know they might be able to say, do they know what kind of vehicle he drives? Because they'll yeah, call and say, okay. hey, I just saw his truck on the street. You know, I mean, uh -huh. any little thing that you can have as a one up on him is going to be good. And neighbors like that, anyone you trust that are comfortable are with, yeah. use right now. There's okay. people out there who love you and care about you, and these are the times that okay. we use them. So if you've got neighbors okay. that you're comfortable and know what's going on, definitely give okay. them a call to okay. alert them, right. and additionally to get any help you can from okay. them. You know, because okay. um, I'm sure they'd be happy to help okay. in any way they can. Um, and so your um, your daughter will go with you, and that will be mm -hmm. fine. She's okay with, yeah. with staying with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Does she work anywhere? Does she have a workplace that he knows about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just well, she works at Cookies and Tea for me, this little camp, but mm -hmm. I don't know that he knows that. Okay. Um, well, if there's yeah. not anything that's jumping out as a something urgent, no. then okay. I'm okay. just trying to make sure too that I told. Them, that man, everything. Yeah. If there's anything else, I guess I could call him if I think of anything else. You absolutely can. Okay. You can certainly do that, Denise. Take your time and just gather your thoughts. Well, what are they gonna? I mean, he'll probably get served with the restraining order, but then what happens with what I told him that he did? Like, does anything? Happen? Does he get arrested? Or he's he's going to, uh, he'll be, Detective Saw will come in and he'll be able to speak to that a little okay. bit more than I can, but certainly this is this is an investigation, okay. an active okay. investigation, okay. and he's going to be working okay. on that. So he'll give you the details of okay. that, but yes, this is now an open investigation, I'll say that okay. for sure. <laughs> um, so there will be follow up. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, and he'll be able to provide a little more information as to, okay. as to those steps specifically, okay. Okay. and we'll bring him in here, and he might be finishing up and wanting to come back in and talk to you anyway. Um, okay. So I just wanted okay. to pop in Thank and you. just kind of get this all rolling. Okay. And like I said, we'll just continue to take it step by step. But today, for the what immediate, that's what I think we need to prioritize is the injunction. This is this is Ryan's dad calling me. I'm not going to get it because I know they're want, they're looking for me now. Okay. Well, let me okay. step out and see if it's okay. Okay. Right. anything.
Detective Wilkerson. Um, they mentioned anything to you about processing your vehicle where this all occurred? What does that mean? Um, that um, evidence where, and, you know, we can put it together to, in addition. And that car's right out front. Right. What I need from you, I just need your okay uh, to do yeah, that no, as no, well. No, yes, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what's your name, ma'am? Denise Winchester. And he's texting me. I have a block, but he uses these text apps and figures out ways to text me. And I, so I know he's looking for me because I was supposed to be at work and he was going to call me at work to verify I was at work. And I'm not at work. Okay. I just want, to, he, I just want to mention that in case he's, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, yeah, for sure. You could go in my car. And if those cameras were working at CVS, I mean, that should have the whole thing. And I don't what know. is he texting you? Just where are you? Yeah, he'll call me. And he wants me to call him. Okay. Yeah. Um, Can I see what he's texting? Yeah. And it's from numbers that he... What is that? Um, Please call me, and that's his cell. But he, I block him from everything, so he finds random numbers on text apps, and that was sent at one five to one. Okay. That means what that means is he's called my work, I didn't answer, so now he's looking for me. Um, and when I left him, when he left me, he was calm because I promised him I wouldn't do this and that I wouldn't come here. And so, I mean, if he gets, if I do this restraining order and he gets served, then he's gonna know. Okay. Um, what kind of vehicle is it out there that you have? Me? Uh -huh. um, it's a 2002 Gold Suburban. Or, do you call it Yukon XL? Okay. Gold? It's like a light gold. I mean, it's really gold. Let me hear him just sign there. And all it is is just consent that we're going to... And I don't know if he had spent the night, but I mean, I have, he just... Grew and the initial from... right there, please, ma'am. That's what, that's perfect. Thank you. Where... A couple of things real quick. How long have you had this vehicle? Oh, forever. Um, I mean, was he in it at any time y'all were together? Yeah, 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 yeah. How long since it's been since he's been? We in? have been separated almost four years, so he hasn't. It's been a long time since he's been in it. Okay. Very long. Yeah, I mean, at least. It, it, so I would say almost four years. But he was in the very back. He crawled up and then sat in the seat right here, like. I'm in the driver's seat, and he sat right behind the passenger seat. Do you have one or two back seats? I just I have two, two, and then one row. So you got captain seats. Yeah, yeah, okay. and then and then the back, and then there's the back too. And he sat in the seat directly behind the passenger side. Right. Which Greenway? Which is a good Greenway? Did, was, was it's like name? across from um like uh, Westminster, like kind of like Westminster is kind of right here, and it's right here. Um, Fleischman, past Fleischman. Um, and you turn in right there. Past Dempsey Mayo. Past Dempsey Mayo. And I think it's right there and you turn left to go in. Yes, yeah. Right across yeah, from Gordon's. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be in there. And that's where he got out and got into his truck with the backpack. And I didn't look back there. You know, I don't know if whatever all he had, I don't know if he got it all. I mean, I have no idea. Okay. But I have, do you want keys to it, or do you want to do it now? Or? Yeah, we're going to get our crime scene to go through it, um, photograph it, and process the prints and stuff. And um, where, where did he exit at? He, um, I came out of the park first and turned right down Mikasuki, and he came down and did the same thing. At the light at Capitol Circle in Mikasuki, he pulled up beside me because I was headed my normal routine to work. He rolls window down, was crying, saying how sorry he was, and then he turned right to head north. Which, which is in the direction of his office, Cary Forest. Okay. Um, okay. How, how did he exit the vehicle? Oh, how did he exit my car? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Um, it, from his, he was, he was in that seat behind the passenger seat. He put his knees up on the bench seat and started pulling stuff out, and that's when I saw all this other stuff. He shoved it in the backpack, got back to his seat where he had been, opened that door, and um, yeah, and. Got, and to say that he would have ever been in that seat opening that door, even when we had it when we were together, he never sat back there. So he, I don't think he ever would have touched that door from the inside that, so I, that I know of. That's a four doors he went out of. Yeah. By the seat he yeah. went up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. If you'll be in there, you've got the keys. Where are you parked at the front? Oh, just right when you go out, it's just like right there. Do you need my keys? Yes, ma'am, please. I don't know how. 
Yeah, we, if, we, if we don't mind us doing it, um, we can get it done while you're up here instead of you having to be done okay. you get downstairs. Oh, you know what? I might have just, I was in such a state when I got here. <laughs> it might be in there. Let me, let me make sure. Um, or my sister them. might have them. No, because I do, I do remember now they made me lock it, and my sister's sitting down there in the lobby. Um, oh my gosh. Maybe she has them. I can call her real quick and ask her. They're not in here. I might have just handed them to her when I... It's like spoof numbers on this, texting her with weird numbers. Yeah, he's texting me now wanting to know where... No, I mean just asking me to call. Let me call my sister and see if she's got my keys downstairs. Sorry about this. Hey, I'm still upstairs, but they need my keys to look in my car. I don't see my keys. Do you have them? I mean, but remember when I, oh, you know what? I might have left them down there when we first met the guy downstairs. It might be in the studio. Yeah, I'll, I'll go down there. It's a clicker. They're going to come down and see if they're down there. But I know, I mean, they're either in the car or I thought I locked the car. I don't know. No, don't walk out. Don't walk out there. They're, I don't know. They just want to look at it, so. I don't have them. I don't have them. Yeah. I don't know, but there's a good chance I left them in there. I was so messed up when I got here. Will you run out there and just see? Yeah. Thank you. I'll, yeah, I'll steal the phone with you. Just have to look and not touch. Oh. Yeah, he, yeah, he said just look and don't, um, don't open the door or anything. Um, David's not here? No, I thought he was coming. I'm just upstairs in some room, yeah. I thought when we walked in, you somebody said lock the car. Yes. Can you call? Can, can you call Ansley and see? And, and I could have left him on that guy's desk down there. Text Ansley too. Okay, bye. She's gonna. She's gonna um, ask the guy downstairs if I left him down there. She didn't touch the door of the car, but she didn't look in. She didn't see him when she looked in. Okay. So that's not good. But 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 it could be a lot, you know. I don't know. I don't have to. Uh, the number that's um, Smith number that's texting me. Maybe asked who it was. No, well, he, he put his cell phone number, because he, he, I block him for everything, so he uses these text apps, and uh, so it just says, please call me, and it's his cell phone cell number. Okay. So that's how I know. And that was at 5 till 1. That was at what? 5 till 1. I hope it's on the wrong. Okay, thank you.
Is this truck a dually or um, four door or anything? It's a four door. What does dually mean? Two wheels in the back. Or four wheels to each side. I don't know. It's, it's brand new. I don't. I don't know. It's big. I don't know. Okay. I'm sorry, That's but right. it is four doors. My daughter just sent me a more description of his truck. Um, if you need it, she said, um, I didn't know it was a diesel. Is it diesel? Where did she put it? Just saw it. Hello. Also? Um, I don't know, but, it's, but I have more stuff. It's a 2015 TAN GMC four-door extended bed, 3500 diesel. I don't know about that one. It's a 2015, so they so, might. Okay. I don't know. Did you notice anything that was different with your truck when you got into that? No, not at all. Okay. Well, can you 
Can you remember it? How did you get in? Um, you walk out my door and I have a circle drive. My car, um, my daughter's car and my car. So I just walked out, I go in front of it and just go around to the door. Okay. Yeah. Do you put the key in the door? Do you use a key fob? Or I use a clicker else? to click it open. Okay. Do you and remember then, using that clicker? Yeah, today? I did. And then I got in and started it. But I didn't go around the back or anything like that. Okay. Um, so you get in, you start driving. Nothing seemed out of place. Mirrors weren't moving. I need my waffle. And I um, call my sister, because I always call my sister on the way to work. And so I turned on Mikasaki Road and called her. And then when a, when a vision started appearing in my mirror, I just started screaming, help me, help me. And then he, grabbed, he came up and grabbed the phone. So. And I cannot believe I didn't rent the car. I was, I was screaming and doing this. Uh -huh. I, I don't know how I did because it's so narrow, like a sucky road with those ditches. But what was the first thing he said to you? Um, give me the fucking phone. You're gonna, you're gonna go up to the roundabout. You're gonna turn. You're gonna go up to the roundabout. You're gonna go around it and turn left or say it was some kind of direction but it was definitely about the roundabout you're going to go up to the roundabout you're going to do whatever and he's right in my ear and I, and I was like was he screaming yeah he was screaming yeah he was screaming and um and I was just like <laughs> like that and um and the roundabout was coming and he's like do it he's like you're going to do what I say yeah he's screaming you're going to do what I say and um or I'm going to hurt you and then I said what do you mean hurt me or hurt I said it back like hurt me or something and he goes with this and then that's when he um that's when he put he just like shoved the gun oh but you know what when he was trying to get the phone because I had it over here he grabbed it but he also grabbed my face because I remember it hurt it was like and it was like he grabbed the phone but he also got part of my maybe my cheek or something because he grabbed it because he grabbed it that now way. if you're driving how did you reach it across your I face did, I'm trying, on the it side must have been, it was behind, from behind because it because it was like this. It came like this at me, so it was from behind. Um, but yeah, he was screaming, cussing. Um, you're gonna do what I say. You're gonna turn here. And then when I when I didn't do what he said the first time, that's when he got the gun and held it right. He shoved it in me in my ribs because I could feel it in my ribs. Okay. And he just shoved it there. And he said, "Do it. Turn here." And I kept going. I didn't do it. I, mean, I can't. It's not funny, but I just can't believe that. And um, because I knew CVS was right there, and it was like that was my goal with CVS. And so then, so then he just starts screaming the F word in my ear. What are you doing? Do you think I'm not going to, you know, do... He didn't say, do you think I'm not going to use this? But he was just, just being very threatening. And was it like, implied that you thought he would use it? Oh, gun? yeah, yeah. Okay. And then... Can, can you describe the gun at all? I mean, I know you said dot collar, but did it look... Was it squarish? Was it round? No, the end, the end of it, like where I guess the bullet would come out, was real tiny, and it was a circle. And then, I mean, it's like how all guns are. I don't know. But then, um, but then, if you kind of went back from it, then it was flat in a circle. But I mean, I don't know. But I just remember seeing the hole, I guess, of where the bullet would come out, and it was real small. The hole was real small. And then, how long? Do you it, know how it, long the gun was? It was like a, um, because he put it all right. Down, it looked to me. It looked to me like just like a handgun. Do you know the difference between a revolver and a semi-automatic pistol? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, if you show me pictures, I might, I might tell you more. But Do you know it, how long it was? It felt like it fit. It felt like it was maybe this size because I felt like it was all there in my ribs. Does he? Own, how, do you know if he owns any guns? No, I mean he's a hunter, but that's not a hunting gun that I have ever seen. So by hunting gun you mean a rifle? Or oh, something oh, else? you know what? Because I said, where did you get that gun? Because he collects guns, he he hunts, and he. But I was like, because when we got calmer, I was like, what? Where is that gun? Where did you get that gun? And he said, I got the gun to kill myself. That's exactly what he said. But I don't know when or how or. I don't know. I've never seen it before. Okay. This is a semi-automatic that he's talking about. I don't know. I, it, no. Uh, it wasn't that one for sure. Uh, yeah, that's just general. I mean, everything yeah, but it different. definitely wasn't that. It didn't have that spin thing. Okay. It was closer to this, but it was fatter. It, like this part, this part was fatter. 
Okay. I'm yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of different variations. It was just that, like, but it definitely wasn't that silver kind. There was no silver on it. Uh, yeah, and I'm just color-wise, I mean, there's... It was more, it, none of that, but it was kind of more that thick. Like, it was more kind of like that. The um, the part that I guess you would hold was pretty thick because I could feel it. I don't know. So was but he said I got it to kill myself, so maybe he bought it recently. I have no idea. The um, you said he showed it to your side. Do you have any injuries that you know of? I don't. Think, I mean, I, my ribs are right here, and I felt it in my ribs, but I don't. I mean, it doesn't hurt when I do that, so I'm sure. I mean, that there wouldn't be any more. So yes. Okay. Before we leave, we want you to check that. Okay. Okay, I will. Um, and the only other place he grabbed me, I told him, was when he reached behind me to get the phone out of my hand. He like pulled like right here, but it hurt at the time, but it doesn't. Hurt. Okay, so you get to the CVS. Yes, and when we pull in, you're kind of like, you go down this little hill to go around to the front, and when we got right here, he goes, turn, and he took the wheel, because he was he took the wheel and um, tried to get me to turn right there where just the trees are, and I don't know how I did it, but I was like, uh, I guess because I was down here, and I just did it back, and again, the fact that there were no cars coming or going was a miracle, but I just did it back, and I knew, because I knew in my head I was going to that spot, and so when I did that, and then I pulled up, and I just parked and turned it off. And I knew, I go there all the time, and it says cameras, whatever, and he's like, there's cameras here. You are going to back up, and you're going to, and, and he, before he kept saying, I just want to, he's screaming, I just want to talk to you, I just want to talk to you. And so I, so I turned around, and I said, I will talk to you from right here. This is the only place I'll talk to you from. And I screamed it at him. So where were you parked? It was right, like, the front, like, the door. The door's right here. We'll, uh, I, uh, we'll call it, this is CVS. Mm -hmm. If I recall correctly, this is Mikasoki. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, the driveway mm -hmm. comes right in like this mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. goes around. Mm -hmm. And he tried to get me to go in here to park. Okay. And I did it, and I went all the way around. So the front door is mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I know this parking lot yes. in front. Yes. And the, there's grass right here, and I was in this spot, the first spot, right there. Okay, so you were right there. Right up against the store, the walkway to the store, I guess, mm -hmm. on the corner of the building. Mm -hmm. Right there, and the door's right there, so really there's only probably two spots and then the front door so people were coming and going and he kept telling me to stop crying that people were but it was raining too so it wasn't that like a, people didn't have a clear view at one point a lady pulled in right here and I, oh she looked at me and I almost said help me but at that point the gun was between his legs like right there so I didn't I didn't do anything okay. but yeah I was right there the whole time and it was a good 45 minutes at least where we just talked did he, was he screaming the whole time? No, I mean, well, the first half, because he was so mad that I did that, he stood, he kind of was, I don't know if he was on his knees or what, but he held the seatbelt together where I couldn't, the red, where the red thing is, he just held it. So I couldn't move because I was going to get out and run in, but I couldn't do that. Um, and yeah, he was just screaming. I was shaking, but I was trying to act like I wasn't. <laughs> but um, and then it took about he just kept do you need to go? Yeah, I so hey. Do I keep going or no? Uh, we'll wait till he steps in, that's fine. Some of the parts we'll get to we we'll wanna go into a little bit more detail. Um, we'll do that as we go. asking his demeanor. Oh yeah, so yeah, at first he was mad, he, he was like holding this the whole time, and he just kept saying to me, I just want to talk to you, you ignore my texts, you ignore my emails, I just want to talk to you, we have a court date like, coming up Wednesday, I just want to talk to you. And so I was just like, what? What do you want to talk about? I'm right here, I'll talk to you. What do you want to talk about? And so the more, he wouldn't say anything. So the more I kept saying that, I'm ready to talk to you. Anyway, he would, I could tell he was getting calmer. He didn't have that crazy, but he was getting calmer and he would, he ended up, sitting in the seat. I had the gun between his legs. It wasn't touching him, but it was between his legs the whole time. And I um, mean, he did let go. And I ended up telling him at one point, I said, Brian, you let go of my seatbelt a while ago, and I haven't, I could get out. I could, but I'm not. I'm listening to you. I'm talking, like I kept kind of doing so. Um, but anyway, so yeah, he did end up, he kind of still kind of sat on the edge of the chair and would look around, but he was, and I, I think he had been drinking or something because he seemed, he just seemed, I mean, obviously off, but I don't know, just felt like 
maybe he'd been drinking all night or something. It was that kind of smell type. I, don't know. I have no idea. Has he ever acted like that before? Um, I've never seen him to that extent, no. I mean, he had completely lost it. And he kept saying, I've lost everything. I have nothing to live for. Many times, I'm going to kill myself. Why shouldn't I have nothing to live for? Did he tell you how he was going to do that or where he was going to no, do it? No, but he said he bought the gun to do it. Um, I think he was going to do it right there. He wanted to do it there because he said something about that. I said, as he got calmer, I said, did you actually plan to kill both of us today? Like, we were just having a conversation. He goes, well, me. And I go, and I didn't ask any further, but he said, but no, he never... But pulling all that crap out of the bag, I have no idea. Well, what color were the sheets? Um, a light, light, light. I mean, maybe even like this color, like a light tan. You know, not, not like the door, but more like this. Okay. But you, I think there was some plastic involved. Now I was that say, I think can about you explain it. that plastic? Okay, so he started pulling stuff. I didn't know anything was back there. I think it was like. A sheet this color, and then I think there. I think I heard. You know how you can hear like. I think there was some plastic. Oh, you, maybe like, like you would use to paint, like you know you put on the floor to paint something like that, maybe. But like I, but, a plastic sheet, like a plastic bag. Yeah, the sheet was a sheet. The sheet was like this color, and it was a sheet. But I remember now that when he grabbed it, it was more. It was two. And I think this one had a noise to it. It was something, it was different. Did it look but like a sheet? It was also sheet? around the same color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did. It looked like a sheet, too. But I think it, I think it might have been some type of plastic. I, but I, I don't know. I mean, that, that was, I mean, I, I didn't know anything was back there. And when I turned, I was like, oh my, you know. And he just, he did, I guess he had to do that twice. Okay. And then started shoving it in that backpack. But there was something different besides just the bed sheet. Now, can you explain that, describe that bottle a little better? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like kind of those old-fashioned bleach where the bottle was like probably that tall, fat, and then skinny, you know, like, and then it was clear. You could see there was clear inside of it, and then it had the spray with the big nozzle. So it's just like, I would call it a bleach bottle. Okay. But it didn't say a brand name. It was actual, like... Could you tell if there was a label on it? I didn't see one. It looked like... Yeah, nothing you would buy. Like, it didn't have a brand on it or anything like that. So like, Clorox, kind of, it didn't say anything. Was it just kind of like a spray bottle? It was a spray bottle. It was big. It? it was like a, kind of like an industrial spray. There was liquid in it. But, again, I, I think it's bleach, but I don't. Could you tell what color it was? It was everything, everything was white and light. So, I immediately, if you saw it, you would say it was a bleach bottle. You know, like, but I didn't smell it or take, you know. I think it was a bleach bottle, pretty sure. Okay. And then something else that I can't remember. And again, it wasn't a hammer, but it it was something like that. It was fatter. It, it was fatter than a hammer, and it was about the length of a ha hammer. But I have no, I have no idea. He did it so fast, I have no idea what that was. I don't know. And then at that point, I said, "Where's the gun?" Because he's shoving all this stuff in the backpack, and he was like right here, and it was at his feet, and he picked it up, put it in there too, on the top, and then zipped it, unzipped the side, the little pocket got his keys. And then did he say anything after that? Yeah, just he was sorry. He was so sorry. And I kept saying, I won't tell anyone. I won't come to police. This is goal to, he was crying. Is this goal to stay with you? Is what? This is this goal to stay with you? Oh, yeah. He wants me to call the divorce off. Yeah. He, yeah. And, and, and he said he got, he did all that because I have blocked him from everything. And so he does try to communicate with me, and I don't communicate back. And so this is why he said he had to do this to get me to talk to him. Where is he living? On Miller Landing Road. We own two homes, and he's in that one. I'm trying to think if he said anything more about killing himself. Because I said, I go, are you are you're for sure you really want to die today? And he said, 90. I was over 95, I can't name 98 percent. It was something, you know. And I said, well, if you're not sure, you know, don't do it. Don't, you know, I won't tell anyone. I won't, you know. He definitely, he said he's been, he said he's been thinking about it for a long time. Killed himself. What, what would lead him to this? To want to kill himself? Because, I mean, our marriage is over. He has a son with um, another wife, and she's left him to live with, 
mountain full time, so he's lost recently. He's, so he lost him. So he says he has nothing left. What's the business doing? I guess. Oh, oh, and also his mom um, found out within the past two to three weeks that she has cancer. That was something else. Yeah, yeah. And he did say that. I'm gonna lose my mom in a year. I've lost you. I've lost. Dad has also called me and wants me to call him, which I'm not going to, but that's just interesting because I just wonder, you know, if Brian went and actually told him everything or what. I don't know. Because my plan was to go out there and talk with him today, but obviously I'm not going to do that. Where do you usually park on campus? Right, um, they're doing construction, major construction on the stadium. So, um, it's in the back part, but I mean, I don't even know how to tell you. Um, like the, the stadium's here, there's that like statue, you know, with the statue in the front. Mm -hmm. And so our parking is like over here. So I'm usually like in the back because they got some construction crap all up here. Okay, so that big block mm -hmm. that goes yeah. back to Lizanne mm -hmm. Street. Yes, exactly. But he knows that too, and he showed up there a couple weeks ago when the last court date was. And Carla knows where you park? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, he, and he, at the end he would say, I didn't mean to scare you. I, did, I just wanted to talk to you. He was very weepy and apologetic at the, when he got out of the car. I know we talked about his clothing. Mm -hmm. I wish I could remember more. You said it was a collared shirt. Mm -hmm. It definitely it? was like a polo, polo? shirt. Okay. Yeah, def definitely like that. But I mean, I'm pretty positive he's sitting up there at work right now. Oh, no, no, no. He's probably looking for me now because I didn't answer the phone. I don't know. All right. You said navy shorts. Were they cargo shorts? Or? No. No, just, they would just be no pockets. For the most part. And you know what color his tennis shoes were? They were a dark color, but I just remember he did say, I've got to get rid of this gun. He did say that. I don't know. When did he say that? Towards the end. Maybe as he was even packing it up. I don't think I asked him a question on that, but he, he mumbled something like that. But the minute he finds out that I came here, he's going to lose it, like, again. And that's what I'm, that's why I didn't want to come. Well, you did the right thing. Because what am I going to do when I leave here? That lady's going to take me to get a restraining order, but he's not going to pay attention to it. And then what's going to happen, like, other than that? Anything? What do you mean? Like, will he get arrested? Or, I mean, is he just going to... I mean, I just, I just don't know. He, 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 if he finds out today that I've got a restraining order, that's it. He's coming for me because he, he'll be so mad. Right. That there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of different things. I mean, the yes, we are looking at criminal charges. At the same time, we're also worried about his welfare. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, there's always a Baker Act. There's always an option. I agree with that. Um, but like I said, with everything that happened, yes, I mean, an arrest is very likely. Um, but again, if, if he's arrested, they can get him that mental health. Yes. Help. Treatment. Okay. Um, you know, if we have enough to arrest them, an arrest is going to be done over Baker Act due to the charges. But the jail is a receiving facility in those cases where they can't get the mental okay. health treatment. Um, if it goes to court, I mean, they're going to, they'll try and get him some help. There are options that the court can make him get some help. I know you said he's going to go into rehab, so the court can order. That? Well, court can order rehab. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. and, and again, that's all. I can't tell you that's okay. what's going to happen, but I've seen times where a court orders rehab as part of probation or whatever, and yeah. th they'll work all that out. I think that's getting a little ahead yeah. of us right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, With his dad calling you, saying that's odd, would you be willing to do a control call to his dad to see if his dad says anything? Or to Brian himself? Oh, my gosh. Brian's going to ask me immediately, where are you? Why are you not at work? So, 
and then his dad. I don't know. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to stay in the sheriff's department. All right. Well, as far as anybody asking where you're at, all you got to do is tell them you had to go, go somewhere by yourself and think. Yeah. I, don't, I really don't want to make contact with him. I mean, unless y'all think that it's necessary. Um, well, it's your option. If he, if he, if he told his dad what took place, and his dad is checking on you and expresses he explained it to him or whatever, then we've got that that information that he's told somebody else. If he winds up sitting here having a conversation with you about it, that's just more evidence per se that corroborating your story about what took place. I think Marcus is calling me just to set a conversation up because Brian really didn't want to tell his dad the details. He he wanted to tell him that he reached rock bottom, stuff like that, but he didn't want to tell him the details because because his dad is so upset about the mom and they are he kept bringing that up that they are going through that, so he didn't want to tell his dad. So I don't I don't think calling his dad, I'm probably 100% sure he didn't tell him all the details. So it's not like Marcus would repeat them all back to me because I'm pretty, it was gonna take me going there and me basically making him do it. And the reason he would do that is because he would think I would call the divorce off and we would get back together in the end. Um, him calling me, he's just going to be, where are you? What are you doing? He's going to want to set up that meeting with Marcus. Um, I don't know. Oh my God, I don't know because I don't want, I don't want to make him more mad before he even finds out, you know what I'm saying? And the point would be to try to get him to say stuff, like... And to find out where he is, if, if he would wind up telling you, want to meet you prior to going there, and we could try to have people in that area whenever he arrives, not somewhere necessarily that He's out at that second, but even if he did pull off the rest of the road and said, I'm at Capital Circle, I'm pulling into the CBS, anything like that would give us an idea of where his location is, because FSU police already have the information, and um, we've got the information out. Our thing now is to locate him, check on his welfare. Uh, as you said, because we don't, it would just be beneficial to do you, locate him. Do you know, I mean, have y'all checked him at his work in the parking lot to see if he's there? We've got people checking. Because I think, I mean, I think that's where he's at. Well, just think about it. I'll think you, about you, it. You can take a few minutes and okay. put one of our biggest goals is to be able to locate right, him. Right, 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 right. Well, and find out, if you can find out from those people if his truck is at work, because that's what I'm thinking. I'm really thinking that is there. Because he thinks that I'm coming there later. What time, what time even is it? Yeah, he would think. Anyway, it, yeah. If you can find that out. Okay, I'll okay. Right.
right? Yeah, I'm just, I've told this story a million times. I can tell it a few more times. Are they going through my car now? They were supposed um, to. Deanna, Deanna, Deanna went to get the keys from Ansley. Ansley is at Justin's house. So, but Brian would never know where that yeah. is, right? No. I'm assuming Brian's at work. He's he's called me. His dad has called me. Did you answer the phone no. or text me? No. Did he say where he's calling? What did he say? What did Brian it, say? He he has to use um, apps, text apps on his phone because I I block so many numbers from him. So this is must be another text app number, and he sent this, that, and that's his cell, and that was around one. You think that's him? That is him because he's telling he's telling me it's him. And so, no, I wouldn't recognize his number. Um, but I think I think he's I think you'll find his truck at work. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know his niece. He's probably. But Marcus Marcus said, said please call me at 1:30, but I don't want to call him. They I, I don't know why he's calling me. I don't know if. Marcus, would you think he talked to Marcus? Well, Brian said I convinced him like that someone had to know what he had done and for us to tell Marcus because he wouldn't turn him in, but at least someone else would know. And um, but he said he, I don't want to tell him about the gun. I don't want to tell. I'll just tell him that I hit Rock. But like he didn't want to tell him the details that I wanted him to tell him. So the fact that he's calling me, Brian might have said something, but I know he didn't tell him the details. He wouldn't unless I was there and I made him. But Kathy mentioned, should I tell Marcus? Let me ask Kathy real quick. No, no, I don't. Don't, don't ask. Don't okay. Find okay. Back. okay. We don't. But, they have not found Brian yet. Oh, they haven't. Um, what time is it? I sent John Barron's over to right. your mom's. I, I, I think they told Johnny just a little bit. Of, well, I know. If, if you didn't show up at work like you're supposed to and he knows you're not there, right. where's he going to yeah. go? Yeah. The only place I knew that he knows in common would be Johnny's. Yeah. So John Barron's is there, so no one can get to Johnny. We tried to get her to leave and go over to your grandparents to stay there, but she won't leave the house. Um, I think he's probably driving around looking for me because he thinks I'm supposed to be at work. Because I told him I was going straight to work, he could call me on the work phone to confirm it, and then I would meet him and Marcus later today at, at his office. That's how we left him. The Carrie Forest office. Now, Marcus isn't working anymore, does he? Mm -hmm. He does. And he said that he would, that we would talk to his dad together. That's how we left him. Would, uh... What did he pull out of the back of the car this morning? I know you told them, but then you told me a little bit. When he was sheets. leaving? Yeah, I didn't know anything was back there. And um, he got he got his knees into the like that seat and started pulling stuff out. And um, In the very back? Mm hmm That's where he was hiding. And so he pulled the backpack. He pulled, it was loose stuff. Like he pulled, you know what? He might have slept there last night and that's why she was there. I don't know. I don't know how long he had been there. But he, but he pulled out a sheet that was like this color. Mm -hmm. And then he pulled out something else because it took him, it was heavy. So I, that's why I think it was some type of plastic. I'm pretty sure it was. Pulled all that out, shoved all that in this backpack, and then pulled something else out. And again, I don't know what it was. It was bigger than a hammer, wider than a hammer, but I don't know what it was. Put that in there, and then there was this bottle, like this big of like industrial bleach, like a bottle. And he pulled that out, put that in there, and then when he turned around and sat down, I said, "Where's the gun?" Because he was about to get out. And he goes right here, and it was on the floor. And he picked it up, put that on top, and then zipped it up, and then unzipped a little tiny pocket that I could see that was right here, and got his keys out. So he told you he was there to kill himself this morning. He told me that he had nothing else to live for and that he wanted to kill himself. He told me that many times. He told me he bought the gun to kill himself because I said, where did you get this gun? Because I've never seen a, like a gun that you would kill people with. You know, he's just got the hunting guns. And um, he said, I bought it to kill myself. What do you think he brought all the other stuff for? I have no idea. Because at one point I asked him, I said, did you really plan on today being the day that we would both die? And he said, well, me. But then when I saw that other stuff, that doesn't make sense. So I don't know. That's what he said. Denise, he was going to kill you, and for whatever reason, he didn't go through with it. He brought that stuff because it cover his tracks. And I'm sorry, you know that I love you, and I would never let anything happen to you, but I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat stuff. You, you did the right thing by calling me, but Denise, he was going to kill you. Well, then, well, then when he finds you. out after 4 o'clock that there's a restraining order, he's going to know that I told him he's going to come for me. Well, hopefully he'll kill himself. We won't have to worry about it. Okay? He's had control.
control over you for years and years and years. He has ruined your life. You and Deborah are the same age, but y'all sure don't look it. It has eaten at you and eaten at you. And I, I couldn't say anything. I talked to Warren one time and said, we need to talk to Denise, and he wouldn't do it. He said, I'm just glad she didn't go crazy. Okay, but you've been living in a crazy life forever, and you finally had enough to get out. I know, I know, Denise, he did it. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't think you had anything ever whatsoever to do, but he held that over your head forever. And he was going to do it again. He wasn't going to kill himself, Denise. He was going to kill you so that you couldn't talk about him later. That is the truth. I've been doing this too long. I've talked to everybody I know over the years for 15 years about how and what we could do. Fifteen years ago, he walked in and told you he had done something. Didn't he? No. Denise. No. You have got... He is, this is not going away. Okay? He's going to kill you. He's either going to kill himself because he's got no other avenue, but he's going to try and control you. He's going to try and stop people from talking about what he did. You say no. I don't... Would, I he, don't... would he go get Ansley and hold Ansley? and call you and say, do what I say? Would he kill Ansley? Would he? I don't, I don't think he yes, would he kill would. me. The only person that's important to him is him. That's he didn't bring that crap to kill himself and bury himself. He brought it to kill you and bury you and give him the problem, because he knows he's got a problem. He didn't say any of that. This is not how divorces go. <laughs> what did he ever say to you back then? Back then, about Mike? About Mike. I never had any reason to believe that he would do that. I, did, I mean, what, I never would have believed. Do you, know, you, you remember the time you went to Atlanta when you had a boyfriend up there and he showed up with a gun? Yeah. What makes you think he wouldn't do something like that? I guess because... Not now, but he... And obviously this doesn't... He loves the Lord. He was a Christian. That's why I married him. He was doing prison ministry. I was doing prison ministry. I had no reason, and I've never seen him like this. I've never seen him like this. You saw him this way 14 years ago in Atlanta. Not like this. This was different. This was very different. This, right. this took it to no, a whole nother. Knowing what you know over 15 years, do you think he would do something like Knowing what you know now. Because it took me a long time to wrap my eyes. I said, no, 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 no. Knowing, I don't, knowing what you know e now. Even after today, even after everything that he said to me today, I, I do not believe, I, no, I don't. And I don't believe he was there to hurt me. He said over and over, I want to kill yes. myself. I want to. I don't want to leave. I'm so, so miserable. I have plastic. nothing to live for. He's brought plastic, an implement to bury you. And you think he would hurt you? I just. I guess I, I can't believe it. And he didn't him. say, I mean, he had the gun on me, but he didn't say, well, he said he was, was going to hurt me. Right. He did say that. He screamed that. Yeah. We can't put it back in the bottle? No, no. Okay, and there's no amount of counseling that's going to help him. He's not going to, he was never normal. He's never going to return to whatever he was. The only thing that's going to work now is you testify and he goes to prison and he goes to prison for a lengthy period of time. And maybe it's 5, 10, 15 years, but at some point, he may get back out. Okay? If he kills himself, well, problem solved. But you can't, I don't believe it. I believe he had something to do with Mike. I absolutely believe it. I, I do not, but that, but this, what you're talking about has nothing to do with tonight. Tonight is what I'm worried about. When he, when it's I go file this thing, of everything. he's going to know. Well, he's going to know no matter what, because he's going to jail today if we find him. Until we find him, do you think you're in danger? Yeah. Do you think Hansley's in danger? Yeah. Do you Stafford. think Johnny's in danger? I don't know, but Stafford and me and Hansley, yeah. How come? Because he's driving around with a gun. Yeah, he only wants to hurt himself. He wouldn't hurt any of them, would he? He wants, he wants me to stop the divorce. That's what he kept saying. I have nothing to live for if you fall through with this. I have nothing to live for. But it's not like you're going to get back together. Well, that, I mean, that's what he wants, and he that's did, pretty he, much what I had to... I didn't say that, but I pretty much had to say, 
we'll meet with Marcus. This could, I didn't say at the beginning, I said this could be your rock bottom. This could be, you know, all that. I said all that. I didn't say I would call it the divorce. Do you think he would really kill himself? Yeah. He's threatened it, it so many times to me. I believe you know enough about he said something, he alluded to something. Why not, with his money and his youth, move on to something else? What is so important about keeping Denise? Which he, which he has. Because I he's think he's afraid property. you're going to say something that he has said in the past. And this, by being married to you is the only way he can keep control of that. Even if it's a little something, he has said something to you, Denise, at some point about... Well, then I would really have to... to think about it because I don't he, he, he's sleeping with all the prostitutes he is doing all that I, th I mean I've always thought that he wanted to stay with me because of money um, because he can do his hunting leases and live his life large because of money and honestly this divorce and he said it today it's going to bury him and it is because he's going to lose the office building that we own together and he's going to lose his home and so to me that's, that, that's what always made sense that's what makes sense to me is money People and and then he has the prostitutes, and then he still has me. That, that's what he wants, and that's why he was saying that today. That he's not at the office right now? Are you there sure? No, if he were, they'd already have him by now. But what are they going to do? They're going to arrest him? Yeah. And, like, and say these are char charges? Yeah. Like, what would that be? What I would, would think kidnapping would be a pretty serious charge. So that'll be a charge? Yeah, and at some point you'll have to go before maybe a judge and jury and play this out for them, too. But just you, like I've been doing do that, here? Just like I've been doing Yeah, these guys are just getting the information to get uh, a report generated, maybe a warrant for the rest, okay? And that's the right thing to do. But, you, yeah, you may have to relive this again in front of strangers. I, I, just, I really want to get through tonight, and I want to get through knowing that he knows, and then I'm still alive. Well, we're going to keep you alive. I'm not going to anything happen But I to can't you. live with you forever. That's true. We have to, you have to live with me until he's either in jail or dead. He is threatened. I stayed with him so long before we separated because he would threaten suicide all the time, and he knew that would get me, and it got me every time. So he's been threatening suicide for over five years. Um, I, I think people that threaten suicide don't do it. So I don't, th I don't think he's going to do it. If he, he would have done it today. If he was he wasn't do there it. to kill himself today, Denise. I can't. I can't. I can't accept Anzi would that. Have had, Anzi would have had no mother and no I father. I can't. I just can't. What do you think he was there to do? What, I mean, what he said, which was, he wants to talk me out of the divorce. That's what he kept saying, screaming. What did he tell you to turn? Do you remember when you left? Well, he, he kept saying, "You're going to go to the roundabout, and you're going to." And I think he said, he kept, I think he kept saying, "Turn left." And I never would. Like the roundabout? I don't, I think he wanted me to go, like, I don't know. He doesn't like you're going to go to the roundabout, because you can only turn right there. But I think he wanted me to go, I felt like he wanted me to go, because when we first went out, he wanted me to turn left, like, by Westminster or when something. When he came out of your house, he wanted you to turn left? Well, I was already on Mikasuki Road when he appeared. And, and so I was probably halfway to the roundabout. Right. And then he kept wanting me to turn left, and I wouldn't. And then he said, you're, and that's when he put the gun to me, he said, you're going to go to the roundabout, and you're going to, I think he wanted me to take it, and then, I don't, I don't know, maybe he said right at that point, but he wanted me to get off of that road and go this way, um, which would be Does towards the interstate, I guess. Where's the sign, Miss Gina? Phipps. And that's up. Highway 12? North of town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, it's off Miller Manning Road. And then it spreads forever, but he hunts right there off the little anyway. But, um, yeah, he kept wanting me to turn left. But he'd been in my house because he said things that he wouldn't have known mm -hmm. without have been in my house. And I have changed him change three times. I've changed him three times. And it doesn't it matter. And I just feel like this restraining order is not going to stop him. An alarm system at my house isn't going to stop him. What's going to stop you? Well, I guess if he kills himself, then I don't have to worry. That's a good one. That I don't, I just so don't think he's going to. All this stuff, the restraining order, putting him in jail, or doing nothing, which is going to stop him? 
Well, I'm, I'm here trying to do something, but I don't, still don't feel right about it. Why don't you feel right about it? Because I know what's going to happen when he finds out. He's going to be mad. And when he left me, he was calm. He was crying. He was sorry. He was, I can deal with that. I can't deal with the other. Denise. And it's worse. I've never seen him like this. Never. He was off. The, I mean, he was crazy. I've never seen him like this. I'm sure it's different now than it was, but go back to Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. But when I think about that now compared to this. That was what, within, that was the first two years of my disappearance? Probably two to three, I would say. Okay. I'm not positive, but I would say probably three. But, yeah, but this does not hold a candle. But driving all the way to Atlanta because you're hanging out with some guy, mm -hmm. and then he, he confronted that guy with the gun, right? Well, he always said he had one. No one ever saw it, but I didn't, I mean, I didn't, like, show it to me. I mean, I never saw it, and the guy, we never saw it, but that's what, yeah, he threatened that. Uh, over and over. I mean, that was... But this was, this was different. And I've never seen a gun like that. I've never... Oh, and he did say, I've got to get rid of this gun. He did say that. And I don't know. Because I asked him, where did you get that gun? And he said, I bought it to kill myself. And then at the end, when he was getting ready to get out of the car, after he had everything together, he said, I've got to get rid of this gun. And I didn't say, I didn't, I didn't comment. But he did say that. I don't know what that means. And he didn't do it. I mean, it's, he held it. And he had it between his legs the whole time on the seat. I wonder where if, it's at. If, if Deborah were sitting here and you were sitting here and she told you that I had done all this, what would you tell Deborah? Run. Did you tell her to don't worry about it? No. I'm not going to go forward. I feel bad. You shouldn't do anything. It'll get better. No. No. Because it's not how rational people act, and those people do not get better. And if you, she sat there and told you that he brought Miss Queen and this is crazy. Okay. Queen. That it's crazy. But you need to understand. It's crazy. You got to be able to see it from out here. But I did. I mean, he was not there to kill himself. The threat to kill myself was to get you to do what he wanted you to do. He's so crazy that he believed you. He believed you wouldn't tell anybody that he kidnapped you. I promised him. I know. Many That's times. how crazy he is. Are you kidding me? You say anything. You did. You did it right. You handled it perfectly. You should never do what he says. Fight for your life. Well, you go to a public the place. Whole time. And you got him to calm down. And you got. But he did. Yeah, he left. Believing. You got him to believe. Think how crazy it is. If I were in that frame of mind and never told me I'm not going to tell him that, you think I would go for that? Yeah. Well, if I'm in that frame of mind, I might, because I am totally off my rocker. Well, he's, yeah. Because he still has this little tiny belief. Because yeah. little, that's all he wants, is you to stay with him. Yeah. But he will never be normal. He's not normal. And I'm sure if you think about the last 15 years, there had to be tons of yeah. abnormal things. I mean, I, I know you didn't tell me about any of them in terms of, I heard a little bit, like the, the gun thing in Atlanta. I heard about that. Um, but other than that, I've heard nothing until the last year yeah. that you sent Deborah and them an email about how terrified you are of him. Yeah. You knew a year ago. Well, yeah, during, you mean the year ago, like from like what, since we've been separated? Yeah, you yeah. said, I don't know how long have we been separated. Well, he grabbed me the last day, and that's why I kicked him out. But that was almost four years ago. He grabbed you four years ago? Mm -hmm. During an argument? That was the last day that he lived with me, yeah. Did he ever hit you? Well, I mean, that that was the worst that I got physically. Like, he just, like, threw me against the wall. Did you tell him you were tired of the crap or what? No, he was wanting to, he, all of, all the issues we've had all during our marriage have to do with sexual issues, and he, like, now he's using prostitutes, and that's what he wanted. He, I married him because he was living for the Lord and was a Christian, and it was everything that I ever wanted, but slowly, within about the first year, he stopped doing Bible studies, he stopped doing everything, and then it, then it got, and it was all sexual related. He's a con artist. He's a con man. But that's what the fight was about, and then I was going through counseling at the church, so I drove, I ran out of the house and drove 
to their office, the people, the elder and his wife, and so they know all of that situation. He broke all my stuff. He, it was awful. But that was the last day he lived with me. And November 1st will be four years, so it's probably about three and a half years ago. He hasn't lived you in three and a half years? And see, I didn't even know until, I guess it's been a year, whenever you sent that email to Deborah and Deanna and I don't know who else got it. But yeah, it's almost been four It was November 1st, so it's almost been four years. That wasn't when the, the email was last year, wasn't it? I, I like within so. the last year. What made you send that email? I don't know. I guess I need to see it because I don't, I don't remember the details surrounding it. I don't know if he had, yeah. what, what he had done. But, oh, yeah, I mean, but again, there was... If anything happened to me, Brian did it. I don't know how to look at it because I don't know specifically what you're talking about. This, because we haven't lived together in almost four years, and he would try to get me to con to talk with him and stuff, and we did counseling, we did everything, but he, he was never genuine with it, and it never worked. And then I, and then I got an attorney last August, which we're still fighting because he won't um, participate, sure and we have another court thing Wednesday. But even you told me that's what he was trying to talk me out of the Wednesday thing because it's a new de deadline that he's not going to make. Well, what makes it? Why would he be so financially destitute? I mean, Marcus would take care of him. You're not yeah, him. but he's but Marcus is taking care of Jennifer and all four of her kids because her husband left. So he's doing the mortgage. He, I mean, he's doing everything for her. He's in an age where he should be retired. But his wife found out this month that she has severe cancer, so he's dealing with that. I mean, he basically would just throw money at Brian all these years, but now and lately, it, I don't. I get the impression that that has been cut off, and especially since when Stafford found all this information out about what he was doing with the prostitutes and drugs, we believe that Marcus cut him off at that point. So I think there's a lot of, and he kept saying that in the car today, financial pressures. He kept talking about, I'm losing, I owe, uh, he said I owe people money all over town. He did say that, I just remember that. And that might have to do with the drugs, that might have to do with the prostitutes and the drugs. But he said that today, so he's definitely money hurting. Um, but once y'all are divorced, like the office building, Y'all had it appraised. It'll either be bought by one or the other, but either way, half the proceeds to each. That that doesn't sound like I'm financially destitute. You ought to be getting at least something out of that. Yeah, and then the house. What did it appraise at? Well, I don't know. They're they're doing the data appraisal now. The home appraisal that he lives in is both of our home, but he refuses to let them do the appraisal. So that hasn't been done yet. Um, but the business makes money. But um, but when I had the appraisal walk through it, I did notice that there were a lot of empty spaces and Brian's really good at the office and he's good at getting people to rent and stuff and it's it didn't seem like it was how it used to be in previous years but I, I haven't been a part of that business in years so I don't know but, but I mean he wasn't going to be financially destitute like he's trying to tell you he would he was going to come into some money at the end of the divorce there would be something left yeah it wasn't but but it, but it sounded to me like he had it owed out like he he did say he was like I owe people money all over town. I, thousands. He kept saying thousands. So I, I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking it might have to do with drugs. Because some of those texts, Stafford has pictures of all the texts on his phone with these girls and the drugs and all that kind of stuff. And this girl is ordering stuff because me and Kathy had to Google what even she was talking about. And um, so that Brian was either getting them. Um, what did you talk to Kathy about? Oh, we talk all the time. She knows every single thing about I mean, when, okay. when did Stafford find out about it? It's been probably six weeks to two months ago. Um, and he left, told Marcus, we told Marcus and showed him everything. And then Marcus went to Brian's house, got all Stafford's stuff out, and Stafford hadn't been back, and he hadn't talked to him since. So that's a huge pressure on Brian, too, because, I mean, he lost his son. Um, but he didn't stop horning around, which is interesting. And so all, and his mom getting cancer is brand new. I won't talk to him. Stafford won't talk to him. I mean, this is all the stuff he listed out as the reasons why he had to go to such extremes to get me to talk to him. You think he was just going to kill you just so the divorce would go through? I don't, I still don't, I don't have my mind wrapped around the fact that he was going to kill me, so I can't really answer. I don't, I don't know. I'm, this, these are just all the things that he was saying. I don't. But I know, by the grace of God, I got out of there. But I'm scared to death for tonight. You stay with us. He doesn't know and where the I lady, live. there's a lady that said we were going to file a restraining order today, but I don't even know what time it is. I don't know if we it's were. Only, it's almost three. I don't know how long that takes. I don't know that process. It doesn't take long. It would be easy to do. Do you think that I'll get it? 
Hey, you'll get it. It's a piece, but it's a piece of paper. I know. And then what? Then they go show him. They. Mm, they're gonna. They're gonna arrest him for kidnapping this morning. And that's gonna be okay. the charge. And then, I, well, I don't know. That. I don't know all the details. Uh, all I get is that little bit you gave me, and uh, from what you told me, that's what it sounds like. It could be something a little bit different. Uh, um, I don't know. But it's domestic, so it's gonna be very serious for a judge. He's not gonna uh, get out any time in the next day or two uh, to see a judge, but. At some point, we got a bank on. He is going to get out. Yeah, I know. And that's why I don't want to come. What other choice do you have? I guess I was hoping Marcus was going to solve it all. Marcus got so much on his plate. Just like I say, if he's already cut him off, then maybe mm -hmm. he finally realizes that it's time to quit helping him. But um, I need to. I need to tell my attorney what happened today. She doesn't know. But, but yeah, so what's your, so finish that sentence. You said, so he will probably get arrested and then he'll get out in a couple days. Then what? Uh, they'll end up, the uh, state right. attorney will uh, file the charges against him for whatever they end up, the charge is, and then it'll drag out for some time. It won't be quick. Oh, right, but during all that time, what about me? What about Ansley? That's right. And that's why you have to go through with it. Um, they may do electronic monitoring on him. Um, I mean, they may be a big enough bond, but since he's never been in trouble, they yeah. may put a bond. A bond just means a promise to show up at court. It doesn't mean that I can't go out and kill you. Right. Okay? Think about that doctor up in right. Kalani. He's yeah. living with his dad. Mm -hmm. um, so in the meantime, you have to be worried about Anzi, where she goes to school, starting back. you got to tell the school what's going on so that they can watch out for her and uh, make sure that she's always got somebody around and she's never going home alone. Um, may have to find something to rent or you have to stay with me endeavor there's plenty of room we can work around he doesn't know where i live could he find out absolutely but but all the should. places that he can that he's going to come to no nowhere's perfectly safe but it's probably the safest um that i can think of. at least there's always someone there and denise now i'm bringing my family into it parker and deborah parker, we love you i don't need anything to happen to you Honestly. All right, so I'm willing to accept that risk, um, and it's risk. it's more real to me than anybody because we see it all the time. It's happened here in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. This is not how a human being who loves people, who cares about people, be, react or behave. This is about power. This is about money. And Denise, you've got to get in your head. To, see, because he didn't hurt you, well, you think, well, there's some good in him. There's not. For whatever reason, he backed off today. Okay. And Nancy would have had well, no mother and no father. And I think he did because I told him pretty much what he wanted to hear. That's the only thing. I don't know how you talked your way out of it. But it well, not, fact, it's not going to work again. The fact that you listened or didn't listen to him and drove to the CVS probably saved your life. If you'd gone where you wanted to go and there was no one around, I don't think you could have talked him out of it. It was just and in my head. And it shot you and buried you somewhere and you had never been found. It was just in my head to get to CVS. I was like, I had to get to CVS. It was so weird. I don't to me, him bringing those things, hiding in the car, mm -hmm. directing you, mm -hmm. he had it thought out. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Okay, and, and I know I keep telling you about it, but I'm telling you, he killed Mike. And he did it for you because he wanted you. And I know that's hard, and I know it hurts, but by God, I'm telling you, that's what happened. How old was Ainsley then? A baby. Huh? A baby. Not even a year. He didn't care. I saw, De Deborah and I saw Mike the night before with Ansley at the mall. And that's the last time I ever saw him. He didn't care about you. He didn't care about Ansley. He only cares about himself. He made Mike disappear, and he was going to make you disappear today. And you have got to get that in your head. You don't ever have to tell me or anybody else about it. But at some point, it needs to come out because he did it. I am telling you. I don't think you had anything to do with it, but he held that over you. And I'm sure at some point he told you something. And I'm not trying to get you in trouble because I don't think you did anything, Denise. But I'm telling you, he killed Mike and he was going to kill you and make you go away. You need to hear that and you need to hear it a lot. You were going to die today. You got lucky. Okay? Next time, it might be he catches Anzi and you and he kills Anzi in front of you just to hurt you. 
And if you think he's not capable of that, think about the man who brought something to bury you with, who brought plastic, who brought bleach to cover his tracks. It, why does it make sense? He's nuts. He killed your husband. But he, okay, if he is nuts, that crazy, then again, what, I can't have an officer live with me 24-7. I can't. I'm not safe. He goes to prison for murder. You'll never see him again. He killed Mike. And he buried Mike where no one could ever find him. That is the truth. I'm wondering if he was taking you to the same place today that he buried Mike. Because he's oh done God. it before. Just, you have to wrap your mind around it, niece. That is what he has done. And he's willing to do it again. He is going to kill you. Think about it. He went through, he slept in your car and waited for you. But I don't think he slept. I think he knew what time he was watching you. That's just not to be. He watched Mike. I watched Mike stay in that office every night till 11 o'clock at night. All the time. Mike was so predictable. I every, every now and then I talked to him. And then I wouldn't get to talk to him. So predictable. Yeah. He waited for him that day. Was it, he was missing for five or six hours, Brian? The day of? Well, a lot of people know. Missing? Yeah. And that's when he killed Mike. You sitting here today, you don't think he could kill Mike? The person that I saw today is a person I don't know. That person you saw today could kill Mike, couldn't he? That person could. And he did. And that's who he was then. He has conned you to no end. It's not your fault. I mean, that person today could have done anything, and I, anything. I just, that's not the person that I married. It's not the person that I knew. It's, it's not, not. It's not the person you knew. Okay, everyone has their private side and different, okay? He has, he has two different personalities. But yeah, this person today could have done anything. And still could, I guess. Because he's going to be so mad about that, this. The person you saw today could kill Mike. He could kill anyone. And he could have killed me. Because the person you saw today is the same person you married. It's just there's two different people in him. When he's getting what he wants, he's all nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if he... I would never tell Deborah or your mom or anybody. This is just me and you. I swear I would never tell them. But were you sleeping with Brian the day that Mike disappeared? No. It didn't happen until later? No, yeah. Well, but he wanted you. There's no doubt about it. And I've never seen a person like this today. You saw him in Atlanta. He's aversion. Against the wall. Aversion. Right. Yeah. Aversion. That was pretty You're early right. on. You're right. And 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 this is why I didn't want to do it this way. This is why I didn't want to set him off and make him mad. And coming here, he knows he can't trust me because I promised him over and over I wouldn't do this. And that's why it's I didn't want to do this. Yes. You knew he would kill you. Yeah. Well, to get out of the situation, yeah, I mean, there was a gun there. I guess it never, I guess I just believed him that he was going to kill himself. I don't know. But, but the point is, when he finds out, he's going to be really mad. That's the point. And that's why I didn't want to do it this way. What do you think he's going to say when they find you? I don't know. If he has the stuff still, then there's really nothing he can say. Well, he, he may... put the backpack in the truck, then he got in the truck. But I don't know. He, he mentioned getting rid of the gun so he could get rid of everything. I don't know. I don't know, but 
if the CBS cameras were working, I was right there. I mean, they can see what all happened. A couple times I reached over and would like touch his knee. Like, I mean, I was really like, I will, I promise you, I will not. Like, I really wanted, which he did. I mean, I wanted him to believe me. After he, no, like, he wants to believe you. He wants it to be like it was. And I'm sure at some point he, was that part of the conversation was, let's just make it like it was. No, he just, he just wanted me to call it a war zone. And the deadline's coming. And the last time the deadline came, he showed up at my office and just kind of like followed me around the parking lot, yelling out the window that he wanted to talk, and I wouldn't. So. Like I said, I get a third person from Deborah two days after it's happened. And, well, she know. didn't want to tell you about the prostitute stuff because she said you would have to report it or something. I don't know. But she didn't, I guess she didn't tell you about that. And the, and the drugs, whatever that is. Well, that's not my problem. That'll, that's these people have to deal with that. Uh, this is my sister-in-law. I don't have to worry about this stuff. Um, but do you, like, it's Friday, right? It is. So, if there's still, if we do go to the restraining order and he does find out about it before, whatever, they stop doing at 5 o'clock, then he's gonna Saturday's get, He's going to get arrested before the restraining order Oh, he is? Okay, that's, that's going to happen. As soon as they they're find not, him. Everybody, everybody is looking for him right now. You think I didn't call everybody I know? So when because, they find him, they'll arrest him? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Wow. And he's either going to break down and I'm an emotional wreck and I did it and I'm sorry, or the other side of him is going to come out and go, she's crazy. I never did such a thing. You're insane. I would never do such a thing. Over what? I've got plenty of money. How do you get the new truck he's got? Yeah. That's always been interesting to me because we've always had older cars, always paid for me cash, never had um, payments. I assumed it was part of his midlife crisis where he's doing these prostitutes and wants part of his image. But where he got the money from, for me, the person that I knew, to get a mortgage for a car or whatever, would never do that. Like So, so he had to have the cash. I'm, I'm thinking that he, 50, 60, he either, either he had the cash, which I don't think he did, it, but that he's now living this life where he has payments. And stuff. Like it's just, That's just not how we lived. And so it's just a whole no different, another area that's so different from how, because I'm assuming he has a monthly payment, which we would never have done. So that was just another way that he's just living this other lifestyle that Stafford ended up finding out about, thank goodness, because we would have never known. He, he says he's been, he's been doing it since I filed in August, and he said he started in September. And Stafford didn't find out until couple, maybe two months ago, six weeks ago. He just ran and looked through his phone? Mm -hmm. He said he was acting really odd, and it had been for a while, and for some reason it was there, for some reason it was unlocked, and he went through it. And that's not Stafford's personality. Stafford took screenshots of everything. I mean, he was so smart. And he told Kathy about it? And he told Kathy about it. He waited two weeks, and every time Brian was gone, he would go through the house and take pictures of stuff he would find. And two weeks in, and he told Kathy, I know something about Brian I need to tell you and Denise. And he told us. And we had no idea. And see, he, he doesn't even care about his little son he because stop. he's doing that stuff in his and own he house. Stop. I These know. people he owes money to, they call home invasions, but they come in and kick the door in. They'll shoot anybody over anything. Take Stafford hostage because he owes $2,000. It's like, I know, it's like he's lost his mind because the whore, they, they came to his house. Stafford had pictures of them in the house. Who? The prostitutes. Uh, prostitutes in his house. From his phone? From Brian's phone? Yeah. Stafford's got it all. Or See, Kathy has it all. Denise, he just doesn't even care anymore. He, that I, don't, would, I don't think ever has. One thing he told me today was he was, um, he has nothing to lose. Um, that's what he kept saying, I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. But then, but he calmed down. And when he left, he was crying. And said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Years ago when, um, Mike Phillips and those guys at FDLE wanted to talk to you and Brian. Y'all went and talked to him, why not? I talked to Mike. I, I talked to Mike. But they wanted you to come in and do an interview, and y'all didn't do it. We did two interviews. We, we did interviews with, like, not local people. It was, like, federal people. Um, I did one, he did one, and I think we did another one. But, but it was always in an attorney's office, mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't... Remember, Mike Phillips came to my house one time, and I talked with him there. But this, the official ones were with federal people, and it was more than one. With a lawyer. 
with an added attorney's office, and they recorded it all. From what I remember. Your attorney or Brian's attorney? Well, I mean, he's an attorney who is friends with the Winchesters. Who um, set that up? Um, who set up the meeting? The one who set up okay. the lawyer. Oh, um, I would guess, Mark, yes, because he's in that same little area where they all work together. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't really remember, but I do remember the location of the of the interviews were at the attorney's office, which is the same parking lot as Winchester Financial Group. Because I remember having to go there twice, I think, or three times. What all they ask you, do you remember? Yeah. Did y'all talk to them? Yeah, yeah. We answered all these questions. I think there's a um, recording. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> but I know it was definitely more than one. Because I think it was like me, separate, him, separate, and then us together. Maybe that was it. But And I remember the location. But that's all I remember. And, it, and if Mike and them had contacted the attorney and asked him if we would meet with him, he might have said no. But I don't remember saying no, no to Mike, because I remember him coming to the house. You think so. the attorney said no, we're not going to talk to him? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying that could have happened, because I, but, I, but Mike, I mean, would come to the house. So I don't right. know. I don't know about that. All that, I don't remember. But it should be recorded somewhere. Mm -hmm. I can't believe this happened. And Nancy's like, so upset. Mm -hmm. I just want us to be safe, and I know at your house we are, but other than that, I mean, we go to work, we go to school. And a piece of paper, an injunction, or electronic monitoring doesn't stop me from sitting in a parking lot waiting for you to kill you. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do? You're going to go forward with this and make sure that you continue telling the story and don't back off of it. No. And don't let him manipulate you into backing away or not testifying because you're, he's going to take it all the way. But I told everything exactly how it happened. I did not exaggerate or lie. I don't think you did either. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you called me. I'm glad you didn't do what you told him you were going to do. Because it seemed like it could I don't know how you got away today. I just kept praying. I don't know how you got away. But in your mind, every time you think about feeling sorry for him, I want you to think about what he did, what he brought with him, and how calculating he was. Okay? You just got very, very fortunate today. I know that. But I just don't want to go through that ever again. That's why you got to keep going forward on this. And as you think about things, and I, I, will. Say, I know it's hard. I, I just I can't I leave will. the mic thing alone because I'm telling you, I Denise. Know. I'll, I'll he, start thinking about he all He not only did that, he choreographed the recovery of Mike's waiters. I was there for a week. And, and maybe that's what the the fright is that, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for that. Well, that's his doing. He did that. Okay? But I'm telling you, he is so manipulative. He is a murderer. He killed Mike. And I'm pretty sure the reason he's going to kill you today is he was afraid he was going to do or say something or had speculation. And yeah, the financial is a big part of it. But I think it's way bigger than just the financial because he had plenty of resources. He was going to get money from the house. He was going to get money from the the business being sold, the rental, the whole nine yards. It wasn't just to take all that from you. It's I guess I first just have to Can you just picture that he that he was would have hurt would have killed me today. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I just never. But you're right. Why would? Yeah. I mean, I see. What Denise, I'm going to kill myself. If saying. you don't come back to me, well, if you come back to me, it's all said and good. But if you don't come back to me. I'm going to take you out in the woods, I'm going to dig a hole, I'm going to kill you, and no one's ever going to find you. And I came prepared to make sure that no one ever found out who did it. If they, um, if they go through the backpack, can can you tell me like what exactly was in it? Like, I mean, I know for sure there were sheet in it, but I want to know exactly. I know, I know for sure. Can you wrap your mind around the fact that it wasn't he wasn't there to hurt himself today? Well, then I thought, well, maybe he was just sleeping and needed a sheet to sleep with. Yeah, he didn't sleep. With, or he didn't go to sleep at midnight waiting for you. He showed up shortly beforehand, probably while it's still dark, snuck through the backyard, got in your car, and sat there and waited for you. God, it's 
and brought all that stuff, okay? And I have no doubt that he did it the same way with the mic. He came prepared. Bleach. Yeah. It, just like television or Google or anything else. He's done this before. He knew what to do. They found nothing when Mike disappeared. Nothing. That is unbelievable. He's calculating. He's cold. I, I, I hate to know the confrontation between him and Mike. I'm sure it was at gunpoint. But Mike, thinking he's a friend, but there's no doubt there was a confrontation. I just never... Do you think Mike came to the home for lunch that day? Huh? You think Mike came home for lunch that day? Came home for lunch? Yeah. I don't. I know. I, I, he was I, always I, at the office. I, no, I, I don't. I don't know. I remember it was our anniversary trip. The next day. The next day. I remember that. I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember lunch. But I just. But do you think Mike would have come home from Ketchum to have lunch that day? I'll have to look back at my notes and stuff. I don't even remember. I just remember he had, we had reservations. I always assumed it happened. And I always assumed that he got Mike at the office. I mean, I would always see Mike. I worked midnights back then, 9 to, or 10 to mm -hmm. 8 or something. Mm -hmm. And I would always see Mike sitting up there working. And every now and then, maybe once a month, I'd stop in or catch him on his way out or whatever, say hello. But uh, I always thought that that's where he got him. But the timeline doesn't match up. He was missing during the day. Mike wasn't seen during the day. Mm -hmm. Brian uh, I remember being home with Ansley and making phone calls. I remember her crib. She had a crib. It was a Friday, right? But I remember that he was supposed to be there because we were gonna go, and a babysitter was coming or Tina was coming. I don't. I don't. I haven't thought. That was on Saturday. I haven't. But I remember making calls and holding her, and she was a baby. Certainly wasn't a late. What time was Mike supposed to go? Like, I, mean, I didn't even find out until oh I bought that night. I have no idea. I don't know any of that right now. He was, he was hunting in the morning and he was going to go with um, a friend he had from work, a young kid. I can't, I can't think of his name right now. He's moved to Jacksonville. I don't, I don't know. I don't but, but I need you to wrap your mind around that because I'm telling you, he's it's outside looking in. He was a part of that. And uh, today was just an extension of who he is. He's not afraid to kill someone. And why he didn't kill you today was maybe it's a public place. Or maybe you hit the right chord with him. Maybe you said exactly what he wanted to hear. I was saying, you know. But yeah. I think it's more, it was where it was. And he doesn't want to get caught. He wants to live. He wants to keep doing what he's doing. Well, that's why I don't think he's going to kill himself. There's no way he's going to kill himself unless he gets cornered and realizes that it's over for me. Yeah, I don't think so either. But he didn't come there to kill himself this morning. And it wasn't going to be kill myself and or kill you and kill myself because I already bring the influence to bury you and cover up his tracks. It was there to murder you. <laughs> that's a horrible thing to think about. But that's the truth. Okay. You need to. I know. I know. And what you're saying makes total sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. <laughs> well, then that makes me even more scared. You should be scared. I'm scared. I mean, there is no safe place for us. We're going to have to stay together. That's why there's a cop in Johnny's house now. Who's the same? You might think you, that, that's the only thing I can think of. Where would you go when you can't right. find you at work? Yeah, it would be Johnny's. Um, and she sure doesn't need us, and you have to decide how much you're going to tell her. She really needs to know the whole thing, which. I hate to do to her. It might kill her. I don't know. But she needs to be aware that at some point, not, not everyone's going to be around her back like we are. Right. And who's to stop him from taking Johnny and directing you? And as far as the divorce goes, we have a deadline of Wednesday for stuff that he's not going to do. And so with that, I should just keep pursuing that, just keep yeah. on that. Why would you not? I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> just, yeah, but I think about him down, being but... mad and then more stuff adding on to it, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, if he's in jail. Did anybody text you? I know Deanna's been, 
I hope they got in the car and got um, whatever they needed from out of there. Dana said a thought. Did he do this to put off the court date so he could be declared incompetent? I, I don't know. Don't answer. I'm not. You tell me. What do you think he did? What did he do? You think he was doing it to be... I think, I mean, as these court dates have loomed, that's when he's appeared. Normally he just, I guess, goes about doing his prostitute things. But he appears in my life when a court date looms, like last time. He showed up at work. And this time, way more extreme, he did this. I tie it to these court dates because it get, as the court dates come, it gets closer and closer to being officially over. Um, that's what I tie it to. And I figured he might show up at work again just because I knew a court date was coming, but I would have never, never pictured this. And I want to go ahead and tell the Leafers and the Martins and the Rays because they know everything they know about the prostitutes. They know everything up to now. So I want to update them and give a description of the truck and just stuff like that. But can you now wrap it around your head what he was going to do? To me? I mean, I guess so. Just like, I guess you got to understand. I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't. And he didn't do it because... He was going to kill you, didn't he? But he didn't do it because... I told him that, that I didn't tell him we could move on from this, but basically I kind of just agreed with whatever. Let me um, let me go out there and see what they want to do about the injunction and all that stuff. See if they yeah, found I don't, don't want to wait too long and not be able to do it. I mean, it's three fifteen. Uh, there's, there's no time frame. We get it done no matter what. And then do you think they, they were going to go through the car and, I guess, fingerprint and stuff? I don't know. They were going to... They probably will swap for DNA if he touched uh, the seatbelt because his thing will be, I wasn't there. Oh, he... Because yeah, he, he hasn't been in that car in how no. long? Yeah, uh, four, almost four years. Right. So it's, DNA doesn't last that long. So, yeah, they'll probably be able to swap well, things and well, say, hey, you okay, were in the Okay, but the, where the seatbelt goes in, where the red thing is, I mean, he held on to that for a long time, so that should... But I did use it to unbuckle, you know, so I... Okay. Okay. He was in the back seat. And then that the back, door. There's doors. That's right. I told him everything. Did okay. you uh, not lock the doors last night? I don't know, but when I started thinking about it, you know, he did have a set of keys to that car. So I always lock the car. So I'm probably like 90 something percent sure I did. But he, I, I never so. thought to rekey the car. So there's a possibility I'm he's got keys. What they might do what they found out. <sighs> and your back hurts? Oh, yeah. It'll get better. It's a normal thing. Has he, has he uh, texted no, anymore? No. Just that, that one? That was Ansley. Yeah, just the one. All right. Now, Ansley is with um, Justin. Justin. All right. Let me go see what they're doing.
We have never met. My name is Mike Devaney. How are you doing? Do you know that name at all? No. Okay. I'm with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Okay. Um, I've literally known you and I've known your family for many, 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 many years. Okay. Um, the reason I say that is, you know, I've been looking into Mike's disappearance. Okay. Um, literally dissected as much as I could about you, you know, members of your family, uh, Brian, um, Mike, and, you know, his family, and the family when you, were, you and Mike were together, okay? Um, worked with a lot of people, you know, trying to figure out the whole scenario of his disappearance um, and had to go back and literally reinvestigate a lot of things that uh, was investigated before, okay? Um, and again, I had to go back to y'all's marriage and what were you doing during those times? What were you doing job-wise? And Mike, you know, and Mike's employer, the whole works, okay? What you all owned, what you didn't own. Um, and this has been an ongoing process for a long time. And, I, and you need to understand that, okay? You know, I used to know the, you know, the, uh, your, your, your gate code by heart and going in your neighborhood. I know your house very well. You know, I know when you took the carpet on the whole works. You know, and then a whole lot I don't know, okay? Please understand that. Talking about the hardwood floors upstairs? You name it, I know about it. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you about a couple of things, and maybe you can fill in a couple of gaps for me. Can, can you do that for mm -hmm. me? Um, I can try. Okay. Um, obviously, I, I, the reason I'm here, I, I know about what happened today. Okay. Um, and like the other officer said, you're going to have to, it's going to have to sink in that today was going to be your last day. Please let that sink in. I mean, he, he didn't have sheets to, to sleep on, you know, tonight or the night before or the night after. He had plastic and he had some other object. And what was that other object he had? Could you tell? Can you describe it? Um, it was, I, I mean, it was like maybe, wide. it wasn't a hammer, but it was kind of that size and maybe wider. I, I don't, I have no you idea what it was. small folding shovel? Uh, no, it wasn't a shovel. I mean, it was like a, I mean, it definitely wasn't a shovel. But, okay. I, but it was about the size, the length of like a hammer. Okay. But, it was, but it seemed to be fatter the way that he grabbed it, but I have no idea. Well, no you are going towards CVS. It's, it's what I can understand. He wanted to turn around and go the other way. He kept saying go to the roundabout, and I think he was wanting me to go back, but I, I wasn't house? really listening. I was, maybe, but I wasn't really listening. I was just trying to get yeah. to CVS. Where do you think Mike's buried at? Oh, I, I have no idea. Any speculation on that? On where he's buried. Buried. I mean, I believe. You don't really believe he he died at on the lake. I do. Why? I just I just always have. That's what I believe. And I have. From when he was saying roundabout, I have. I don't know. I talked with the last two people, and I can't remember if he wanted me to turn left or right. I no, don't no, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. Oh. Why do you think Mike? perished in the lake. I just Because he didn't he didn't die in Lake Sinemal, okay? I don't that's what I've always believed, that's what I believe. And why? I've never been proven anything different. I don't Well is there a any proof he if he would have perished in that lake, he would have been found. Okay. There's never been a person that has fallen over or whatever that they've never found except for Mike. I mean, that's literally, it's, it's, it's an impossibility that he died in that lake. I guess to, that, that's just what I believe. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you knew all the information about, you know, what was recovered out there and all that, right? My dad would keep me updated, yeah. Yeah. You had this big monster search and none of that, and then later it just appears. I mean, that, you know, that kind of led investigators going in different directions than what they initially thought, okay? 
Uh, I mean, I was even curious. I mean, I, I recovered the car I used to have during that time. I got it from a junkyard in Alabama, brought it back here and tore it apart. The little boat that Mike um, had, a little Ginu boat, I found it over in Monticello, brought it back just to, I just wanted to get a good look at it. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff. You don't have a clue what we've looked at. And we've, we've certainly come to the conclusion that Mike did not, again, perish or die on Lake Seminole. Okay? Please understand that. You know, we've kind of tracked what's, you know, what's been going on in y'all's lives, again, before Mike disappeared all the way till now. Okay, we knew about the divorce stuff. You know, we knew about people living in different places and the whole works. Talk to Kathy, she probably didn't tell you that. Or she may have, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, and, and you seem to say you have a clue what happened to Mike. Were you and were you and I guess you, Mike, Kathy, and Brian? Y'all are pretty close before Mike disappeared, right? Yeah. yeah. How close were y'all? I mean, I would say we talk pretty much every day. We were very close. Yeah. I'm still very close with Kathy. Yeah, I know that. I mean, again, we researched, you know, trips y'all used to make to Orlando and some other stuff. Apparently, you were really close. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't. We, yeah, me and Kathy still, she's texting me right now, so we're still very close. Okay. If I say we're totally aware of all the, vi the videos, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you say what? The videos. I would have to see them. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. But you, okay. you're clueless when I say videos. I don't, yeah. You, you, Kathy and Brian? I would have to see them. Yeah. You're, you have no idea what I'm talking about. No, I'm just I'm just starting to feel very uncomfortable. Okay. But well, I'm, I'm, I've been uncomfortable for a long time because we needed some things on this case. Right. And we were hoping one day that either Brian or you maybe could fill in some of the gaps there, pull in a piece of the puzzle. Right. But I guess right now, I really, I need to focus on this and what happened this morning, and I want to get this restraining order done by 5 o'clock, and I want, I mean, I want me and my daughter to be safe, and that's what well, I'm focused there's, on. Well, there's no doubt that Brian's going to be located and put in jail, so okay. I would imagine he's not going to immediately be bonded out under the circumstances and the crimes that he has committed. Okay? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I just want to get this restraining order done so that I can have a little peace yeah. for tonight with my daughter. That's that's what I'm focused on. Well, right if, now. He is, if he's arrested, you know, in the next few hours, which I'm sure is going to happen, you know, Leon County is very good about finding people. Okay, uh, that's going to happen. When Brian is arrested, which will happen, he is going to probably provide another side of whatever happened today. You're this aware morning? of that. Yeah. This morning? Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what he's going to say. Well, that's what people usually do. They they give a uh, their side of something. Let's hear that. Yeah, I don't know. What I, if I don't know what he's going to say. I have no idea. Yeah. What if he starts talking about the past, way in the past? Then he might, I don't know. I have no idea what he's going to say. Yeah. No idea. No. What if he I mean, starts talking about, what if he starts talking about the it. disappearance of, of Mike? I hope he admits this morning. I hope he admits what he did. If he talk, if they ask him about Mike, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Well, has Kathy ever talked about Mike's disappearance? Or not Mike's, but Brian's disappearance? The day Mike disappeared? I don't remember. You don't I'd remember have to, that? No. I'd have to, I can, I can text her right now. No, I don't, no, I don't remember. Like no. Okay. I'm going to hear from you. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, you knew, I mean, Brian just disappeared. I don't, I... Cassie's okay. never talked about that? I she, don't, I'd have to talk with her. But yeah. again, I, I really, I want to focus on this. And if you, I mean... Well, this is I, kind of just, I understand that this is what you want to talk about. Well, this is this this thing today, you know, is kind of a done deal. You know, we know what happened, but it's going to be verified in the video and all that. Whether so. whether Brian admits to what he did to you today, he, I mean, he did it. I mean, right. I mean, and once they arrest him, I'm sure they're going to find some of the things that you talked about. I hope so. And that's that's kind of a done deal. 
Okay. But obviously things have, things have been building for a, a long, long time. Well, we've been separated for a long time. Yeah. But for me, again, I want to file this restraining order before 3.30, so I'm not, I mean before 5. So I don't know yeah. but it's 3.30 right now. I just want to make sure that I have time to do that. That's okay. my priority okay. right now. Well, I know what time it is. All right. I know the other officer talked to you about a lot of different things, okay, about what's been going on and everything. Okay. Um, I wish I could just get some fill in some of the pieces of the puzzle. I'd much rather get it from you than from Brian, because when he's arrested, I'm going to talk to him too. That's fine. I don't want to see what he says. Okay. 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 Um, he may say something you don't want to hear. I don't know. Well, I have no idea. You're not, we'll not a clue. Not a clue. I don't even know what he's going to say about this morning. Well, uh, you know, the, this morning's a done deal, okay? You know, we, we know what happened. You told us. and. Again, it's going to be a pretty good video, and I'm sure that they're going to find some of the things that you talked about. So that's that's kind of, that's solved, so to speak. Okay? I think it was my phone. You heard? Oh, that's funny. My attorney's calling me. Let me just see real quick. Okay, sorry. There you are. But I guess what I'm saying is about the mic situation that you want to talk about. I, I don't want to talk about this right now. Really? I, you Would know, you talk about it later? I don't want to talk about this right now. I want to get this settled first. This is settled. It's not settled to me, though. I have not gone down. I have not filed the restraining order, and that's what is pressing on me so bad. So I understand that you want to talk about this, but this is what I want to do. This is what I, has to be done Yeah. You got, you um, today. Got some, you got some time. We're almost done. All right. I mean, you know why it's so important to talk to you about Mike. I mean, this is, I mean, this was your, this was your husband. He simply vanished. Hopefully, you still have an interest in that. Well, again, this is my priority right now, and I'm just, I'm not comfortable talking about this right now. This, I've had an unbelievable day, and I know you have. this is, I know you have. this is, it's just all too much right now. I just, I really want to focus on. This. Has it, has it sunk in that you literally saved your own life today? All I know is I was praying. Well, I, you, I don't even you know did, how You I, did the right thing coming I here. You know that. I, I mean, we'll see. I don't think there's any scene about it, considering what he had in the back of your vehicle. You know, I'm just, that's a clue right there. I was just doing the best I could. And well, you did. You did. You saved your life. I just want that to sit now, now I just want my daughter and I to continue to be safe. And that, that's why I'm so worried about this. That's why I can't even focus on that because I just, all I'm focused on is us and getting through this night when he's going to find out that I told after I promised him over and over and over that I wouldn't tell anyone. And when he finds out, I'm just... Well, when somebody does this to you and, and has a gun involved, they can't really expect you just to ignore that. Well, okay. but, but I had set up where I wouldn't tell anyone and I would meet him later in the day. Well, yeah, you were saying everything because yeah. literally at that yeah. point you had to say something again. Right. You had to keep saying this, but it's true to save your life. Right. And, you, so, and, you, and it worked. And he, you know, I guess pretty agreed to that and then left. And then I was supposed to meet him and his dad about now, today, to talk about it. He goes and buys a bit and do something very, very horrible. Okay? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or whatever. He did that. Okay? Yeah. And he's stuck in your vehicle, and there he was. He didn't knock you to the door and say, let's talk about it. No. All right? No. Look what he did. I mean. And I guess that, that just, I still just can't believe it. Well, you're going to have to believe that you're alive right now. All right? That's and I'm pretty darn important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he's going to be arrested on some very, very serious charges. Do you know the procedure as far as like when I file this, if he's already arrested, does, I mean, then he's just arrested, but then when he'll get out like tomorrow, right? Or I mean, I don't know how uh, it works. I, know, but but I have no idea what sort of bond they're going to put on. So it depends on uh, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when he's out, he can just do whatever, right? I mean. Well, let's hope he doesn't do whatever. I hope it's finally sunk in that he's screwed up. 
and you're going to go through the court stuff, and hopefully that will sink in too, that he loves us. I'm just worried about that long period of time where I know, like if he gets arrested, there won't be a court date for a long time, and it's that time I'm worried about. That's where he's out, knows that I told. When I well, he, can't I be, he can't be that stupid to think that you're not going to tell. Um, but I'm just I'm just worried about that time in between, and I'm worried about me and my daughter and where we're going to live and how we're going to be safe. I mean, I don't even have a dog. Yeah. Well, what, what we have seen, we've, we've seen a side of Mike, not Mike, but Brian, that we knew was there, and it surfaced again. Okay? Because, again, we've kind of tracked his history. And we also know, you know, Mike vanishes. So... Well, I myself have never seen anything like what I saw this morning. Never. I, well, what about the, Atlanta, what about the well, Atlanta episode? It wasn't a person, but it was that was on a whole, this took it to a whole other, right. that was nothing compared to this. But when he left, when he got out of the truck, he was crying, I'm so sorry, I'm so like back calm and not that person anymore. That's how I left him, and that's how I want him to stay. And then me coming here and filing this and him finding out. That's the way you want him to stay. You really think he would never explode like this again? I would have never thought he would have done this. So oh, I don't yeah. ask me, and, and because I have no, I mean, obviously, he's capable of what he did today, because he did it. So. Do you think he's responsible for Mike's disappearance? I do not, and I never have. I would have never married him if I thought that. I would have never wanted so bad to have children with him. I would have, I mean, in my mind and in my heart, no. David is my brother-in-law and he was just in here talking to me right. about trying to get me to understand that, you know, that my life was in danger today. Absolutely. And then having me to look back on that whole situation now from a different point of view. And I'm definitely going to do that. But do I believe right here in this moment that he had anything to do with that? Absolutely not. Do, yeah. Does that mean that I'm not going to process this and yeah. then go back? And, of course I am. But I've, but I've got I've got to process this first. And I know you understand that. Sure. Um, well, process this, but please, when you when you find time to go back, you need to process a whole lot about whatever happened. Because in studying this whole situation, um, we knew that one day there would be a blow up. We predicted that. There Today, was. Until it, there was. Oh, I don't think it's finished yet as far as people talking about different things. No, but I just mean between me and him this morning was a blow up. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, and it, yeah, again, uh, I'm still like a broken record, but I hope, hope it is sinking in how bad it could have been. I think it'll take some time, but I'm realizing the depths of what could have happened, yeah. Yeah, well, you don't carry that stuff and have a gun, you know, to sleep with it or whatever. Mm -hmm. I heard you say something, you thought maybe the sheets were used. Or he was getting used for sleep or whatever. No, I don't think so. You don't have plastic and whatever the other two was. But. And again, I hope that I hope that backpack's still there. I hope they can, the whoever the police can pull it out and see exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because I, it was a, it was a turn. You know, a couple glimpses and that was it. But I, I'm pretty sure I'm right. But I, I would like mm -hmm. to know myself. Did I see this right? Did I? You know what I mean? Like what was in there? I want to, I would like to know. We'll find out. Just to confirm. When they, when they find him, I'm sure that they'll eventually get to whatever that was. Right? I hope so. That's, just, that's down the road. I hope so. Um, I just want everything to sink in about. I'm not going to say I'm not concerned about this, I am. But you're alive. Right. I'm, ta I'm talking about the other. Right. There's a whole lot of people want some closure to that. Right. We all think we've got a pretty good idea of what happened, what the whole scenario was. Okay? You need to know that. Okay. So. And I will. I'll go. I'll get through this and then rethink everything. Because, again, I've never seen anybody 
this way that he was this morning, and I've never, definitely never seen him this way. Just all of it. He was just crazy. Right. He was crazy. Well, I'm going to go out and find somebody to share himself to take care of the other matters. But, the restraining order is done. No, okay, thank you. But I want, I'm going to, I want, I want to leave on this note. I was hoping you could fill in some of the pieces of that puzzle. You have it. We arrest Brian, he might. Okay? Yeah, I have no idea. Well, just think about okay. what you said. Okay. okay. Let me stay okay. out see if I can find somebody to take care Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay.
Are they able to get in the car, do you know? In the car? Yeah, they're processing <laughs> it. Okay. You talked to Melissa earlier. Yeah, I'm anxious and I really want to file the restraining order. Okay. Because it's Friday and there's... Well, they... It's too late to do it at the courthouse now. And it's not a problem. Um, he's in custody. Oh, yeah? We have him. Um, to get an injunction, you'll go to the courthouse to, or oh, to the yeah. jail tomorrow morning. Up to the jail. At 8 o'clock. And you can fill out the paperwork. Melissa said she'll meet you and... Well, my, my brother-in-law can go. She doesn't really have to. My brother-in-law is a policeman. He can go with me. Okay. 8 a.m. at the jail? Correct. Where is that? Right behind us. Oh. On our, if you go down further on Apple Yard, uh -huh. you'll see the entry, main entrance to the jail. Okay. So I file the injunction there. Correct. You can fill out the paperwork and everything because they do first appearance over there. Okay. And that's at the time that the judge will review them on the okay. weekend. Okay. 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 All right. Oh, good. This is Melissa's information and okay. information she left for you. Um, do, I, do I need to tell her that she doesn't need to come at eight? Or? I'll call her. Okay. Thank you. If you decide you want her to okay. call her, um, her cell phone number's on the back. Okay. And okay. if you need anything. Um, as far as the injunction goes, did she explain to you what you do? Okay, you'll basically write a little story about what took place okay. and why you need an injunction. Okay. Um, he'll be served unless he, depending on what the bond is, he, um, he'll probably be served at the jail. So he'll know about it before he gets out, probably. Okay. Um, with, but you'll fill out an affidavit of why you need it and okay. the little story about what happened today or anything else that you want to put okay. in there for okay. the past, okay. the past four years. Okay. The judge will review that. There'll be a hearing within 15 days. First, you'll get a temporary injunction. Okay. There'll be a hearing within 15 days, which would be his side to say his side of the story. Okay. And um, the judge will decide at that time whether to continue the injunction or not. Okay. 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 But you'll get all that stuff. Okay. Um, do you have any questions for us at this time? Can you tell me, did, was he at work? Did you find him at work, or can you tell me? He, I don't believe they found him in the parking lot. At work, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they arrested him? And charged him with what? Well, right now he's in custody for a few things as far as this goes, as far as charges come out. Um, I can call you unless you know what the charges are. I was just are. wondering if you knew. But, uh, well, we're going to con complete the investigation okay. and see okay. what all the charges we have because we do have, um, there's, no, we don't believe you, there's more than one story to everything. And with, uh, but based on what you described, we've got ag assault with the arm and false imprisonment. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you need this stuff about because he is actively using prostitutes and we have text messages and stuff from his own phone where it's like proof. Do you need any of that or that's not important? No, okay. not at this point. The, as far as all the other stuff, uh, where you'd be a good thing to go through you know, with your whatever you went through with the hearings at court and everything. Okay. That, okay. That's more so for okay. that type of stuff. And do you know with him being, so he got arrested and went to jail, to the jail? No, he's not oh. in jail yet. Oh, well did they arrest him? Or what, what did they do in the parking lot? Like? They, they brought him back here. He's, he's in this building. Oh. And then what will happen? We're going to interview him based okay. on everything that took place. Okay. And um, then we'll go forward there with the investigation. Um, like I said, we can call you and let you know the outcome because we're also uh, still looking for the stuff you described that came out of the year. Okay. Um, when he, so he's here in the building and y'all will talk to him, but then will he just leave? No, he'll be going next door more than likely. He'll be going to the jail, okay. And then I'll be there at 8 to turn in, paper. basically it's paperwork, right? That I'll be doing tomorrow at 8. Yeah, you'll paperwork. fill it out okay. and the judge will review it and everything tomorrow morning. Okay. Well, I, are you going to talk with him? Are you going to be one of the ones to interview him? Oh, I just, to I mean, well. I hope he, I hope he tells the truth, but, I mean, if he doesn't, I've told everything that, Understand. everything that happened exactly how it happened, I mean, the only proof, I guess, would be that CVS camera, you know, other than he said, she said, and then hopefully they can find that backpack with all that stuff in it. That's what we're hoping for. But I didn't, every single thing I said was true, and it was not exaggerated, and we'll just see what he says, but. Okay. Um, one other thing, I don't know if you remember me. We graduated together. What's your name again? Brian Bishop. Oh my gosh. With this other stuff that they're talking to you about. About Mike? Really? 
I knew, I mean, after talking with, you know, David McCraney, he wasn't mm -hmm. here, he's my brother-in-law. Um, yeah, he gave me a lot to think about. It's, it's just, just overwhelming, though, I tell you, it's just, this, this morning, this person, I've never seen him before, and to have to come to terms with what could have happened this morning, I just, I, I, I can't even process that verbally yet, much, much less inside, and then to go back, and think about all those times and all that, you know, that stuff. It, yes, I'm going to. I have to. I mean, I have to because I saw someone that I've never seen before today. And uh, it's been not displayed to you for all this time, and there's no telling what will happen next time because they will do a uh, court order for, uh, for once it gets booked, they'll do a no contact order. Still, so get the injunction. Okay. Because um, that covers they're both similar, but the one, if it continues, it can build okay. it up to a felony. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But uh, the like I said, we can call you and let you know what's going on, what the charges are, that would be great. and everything else. Um, the information packet has different stuff that she had. If, uh, but as far as the other goes, you. Whatever happened to Mike, you don't want that same thing to happen. Oh, no. So, I, mean, I feel so fortunate this morning. No, we've known each other. We haven't seen each other in a long time. We've known each other in a long time. Stuff you described, he was getting out of the back. Did not sound good at all. At all. No. That, that. And I never, it never dawned on me until David started saying, why would he? You know, why would? And it just, it all, everything David said made perfect sense. And that's very scary. Yes. Um, can I ask you this though? You said he's here and he's going to be interviewed and stuff. So, for sure he'll go over to the jail and spend the night there, or not for sure? Like, you just don't know? I mean, I'm just kind of wondering where it's, he's going to be. He's going to be mad. Is, that's what right. I'm asking. Um, uh, everything with our investigation, more than, more than likely, likely. Okay. because we do okay. have we do have a deputy at CBS. So okay. One of the detectives went there okay. to the review okay. committee. Okay. Okay. So okay. we're we're taking multiple steps to do the charge. Okay. And I mean, I'm gonna. I know David. Her, his family will let us stay with him, you know, this weekend. I can't live with him forever, but I just, I have to get to a point where me and his, my daughter, we feel safe, and I do not feel safe. Well, if, if at all. you knew something about Mike with him, and that information was able to come out, and he was charged with it, he wouldn't be getting help. Then me and David already discussed that he has threatened suicide so many different times. I don't think people that threaten suicide follow through. I, in other words, I don't think he's going to commit suicide. A lot of times it is a threat. Sometimes uh, people that have threatened it for years wind up doing it out of the blue. So. Well, I, I mean, I didn't even know coming here was the right thing to do. It was but absolutely just, the right thing to do. I didn't, I mean, I just felt like I didn't have a choice. If you didn't report this to us today, and the same exact thing happened tonight or tomorrow. Right. We wouldn't have you wouldn't had have any idea of right. what took place right. this morning. Right. And, so it was the right thing and to do. Yes, absolutely. No two ways about it. And if you hadn't, there's no telling what. I mean, he, he was in your vehicle. I scared as hell to begin with. But, it, but now, like, that visual, I mean, it just, like, even trying to think about Mike right now, I just can't because all I can see in the rearview mirror is that image of him coming. I mean, it, it was terrifying. I'm sure. And I cannot believe I didn't write the car. I mean, I can't. Oh, well, Mikasicki Road, you know, the little in the ditches and how it's so narrow. Yeah, I, and everything. I can't believe I didn't write the car. I've never been so scared in my life. And no. I can tell you from doing this pretty much since we graduated, it don't get any better. So they come in here was the right thing to do. Absolutely. Whenever, the way I describe some things with, with domestic violence and different things, people don't go into a relationship or get married because somebody's already beaten them. That's like throwing a frog in hot water. It's going to jump out. Right. But you get in lukewarm water and the heat gets turned up. And that never go back. And it winds up burning you because you don't realize how it's happening so quick. Whatever the time frame it takes to do. 
So the best I can do for my safety and my daughter's is to file this thing in the morning at 8. Right. Um, I mean, I'll hear from you guys, I guess. And then stay with my brother-in-law and his wife. That's Deborah, Deborah Merrill. Mm -hmm. um, stay with them. And then what? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I go to work Monday, and they start school. It's just, it's very scary. And we don't own guns. We don't, we don't even have a dog. Like, we don't have a security system. One thing to consider. Uh, the, you were talking earlier about having to change the lock so much and everything else. Um, the security system wouldn't be bad at all. I'll definitely do that. Okay. So it's just if you, yeah, as far as anything else, if you hear something suspicious outside, see something suspicious. Oh, and I'm going to tell my neighbors too because they all know the situation. We'll respond okay. and okay. whether it's. Well, we responded to prowlers. It was a raccoon on the roof. Okay. We'll respond to Can y'all, it it's a gated community. Can y'all get in? Like, can you get in without knowing the gate code? Or it's um, called Mendia Plantation off of Mikasuki Road. Yep. You can get in. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Hope, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen because if you guys talk to him, and, well, what, at whatever point he gets to walk out of the jail, that's when, I mean, I need to know because that's when I need to be on high alert. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's. I need to know that, and I'll know that I'm going to know. Where's that packet she gave you? I think there's um, part of Vine in there. It's what? It explains Vine. Oh, part of, oh, oh, yeah. Which is, uh, yeah, it'll tell you how to do stuff to be notified. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, good. All right, well, then I'll do that for sure. Because at that point, whenever that time comes, that's when he's going to be the maddest at me. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I promised him I wouldn't do this. That's one of the reasons I got out. And like I said, if he had something to do with the other, which obviously this man, think obviously that. that man thinks so. no, I can't remember his name. But, oh yeah, yeah, I know, but I just think about the walls. Well, I'm David. But if him going in on these charges, it, very, yeah, compared more, to the other charges, a big difference, huge difference. That would be a no bond. Understand. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. But you but you won't be here to see him tonight. You won't, but other people will. Brian. Oh, I've already seen him. Oh, you have? Just in passing. Oh, but okay. Because I was gonna say. Like, is it easier? Okay, I was gonna say. Can you tell me what he's saying? Okay, but yeah, I mean, again, I hope that he tells the truth. But I don't know. I have no idea what he's gonna say. Okay. But I have told the truth, and that's all I can do, right? <laughs> That's it. And pray. Okay. Definitely. Now, are they done with my car? They needed to do stuff with my They're car? They're done with it, and I'm going to walk you down for it. Okay, I need a trash can for all of this. Thank you so much.